Hey, everybody. It is a Thursday mm -hmm. afternoon and we're just getting going, but real quick. Give me a minute here. Let me start off with Gabby.com, Gabby.com slash great friends. I invite everybody to please use this website and here's why. Saving money. It's all about saving money right now. Oh God, if you guys only knew, man. I mean, be, last week was the freaking dryer. Okay. Then it was the ACT tutoring. All right. And then a uh, little fender bender with a kid in a car, you know, I mean, just the money just flies, dude. So look, um, save money where you can gabby.com slash great friends. This is a site where you put in your insurance information. I use this brand of insurance. This is the policy that I have. And then they compare for you all these other insurance companies for home and auto. And on average, Gabby customers save like $900. And I say like, cause I saved 600, 600 bucks. And so use this website, gabby.com slash great friends, dude, I'm trying to help you guys out. And you guys using this will help me out us out. All right, let's keep rolling. Um, also want to talk today about total T clinic. Yo guys, I'm coming. I got to get in. I really do. I got to get in. Um, I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm actually losing weight because I'm really, really watching my diet. Cause I would like to be able to take my shirt off this summer, but I feel like I know when I'm here, but I want to get up to here. Total T clinic, total T clinic.com. Hey, Tori holistics sending out a lot of love to Ruthie. Is Ruthie going to stop by tomorrow? She should. She should stop by because this is a big holiday weekend and there are all kinds of specials happening. Lots of savings at Tory Holistics. Use our promo code Tatis. You'll save 20%. Super simple. Corky's Pest Control. Phew, you know the story here. Call 1-800-901-1102. You know the deal. And lastly, Seven Mile Casino. Thank you so much. We love this partnership. 24-7. They're open. Poker, blackjack, all your favorite table games, outdoor casino, fresh air, heaters when it gets cool, open 24-7, just minutes from downtown San Diego, 7 Mile Casino, that's the place to go. All right, it is a Thursday. We got a big day ahead of us. Let's do it. Hey, great friends. What is going on? It's Thursday on Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. And we are coming to you from the Seven Mile Casino Studios and just getting on the airwaves, just getting onto the stream of YouTube. And uh, we will tonight be making our way onto cable television. So any platform you're looking for us, audio podcast platforms, we're there. Just as always, I tell you guys, the easiest thing to do, go to kaplanandcrew.com, K-A-P-L-A-N, -A -A kaplanandcrew.com. That's where you get everything. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Cited, Brown Bag Blog. I mean, you get them all. So, I mean, that's where we're at. That's where we at. All right. It is Thursday. Oh, Alex, nicely done. Alex is putting up on the screen right now, for those of you that are watching the Kaplan and Crew website, for those of you listening on radio, Again, uh, not while you're at a red light, but when you get home, be it on your phone or on your computer, kaplanandcrew.com. Website's looking good, Alex. Cousin Nancy got this thing humming. you know. Oh, and do this. Go all the way to the bottom and put in your email, and you'll be part of our email list. We only send out emails on Friday. That's it. Only on Friday. Oop, I saw Bill Walton's cited question in there for our cited debate of the week. Yeah, you go all the way to the bottom, though, dude, and uh, you put in your email. And we will send you emails on Fridays and tell you what was going on that week. Send you some links, whatever, you know, I know email is kind of like a weird thing. Now I get a lot of emails too. And I just delete them every day. I know probably other people do that too. You guys will probably delete our emails also. I wonder if our email list has any value. I got like 17,000 emails. Pretty good. All right. Anyway. Hey, listen, um, want to talk Padres today. Want to talk Dodgers. Um, want to talk about the constant irritation that is ongoing in America. And it's either new or it's just that we're videotaping it all the time. The, the number of you guys that send us fight videos, because as soon as you see them, you send them to us. Like, I wonder if this fight video will make the show tomorrow. Fight videos are getting more brutal, dude. Wait till you see what happened between a Dodgers fan and two Astros fans. One little Dodger fan kicking the ever living hell out of both Dodge or both Astros fans in the ballpark. By the way, while his little kid's sitting on the seat crying and his wife's trying to break things up, well, sort of, kind of. All right, we got a lot to get to today. A lot to get to. 
Say hola to hermano numero uno grande Alejandro Padilla. He is representing the 805 Oxnard, California's favorite son, Ventura County, in La Casa. Grande, hola. Um, For those of you that care or wondered, I ended up, yes, getting tickets for Future Islands. And no, I didn't get them through regular sale. Yes, I had to go pay a $22 fee on StubHub. Ridiculous. A $60 concert turns into an $85 show. <sighs> my goodness, man. Either way, that's my first thought. Back to you, Scott. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hey, um, I feel your pain. And, and I understand frustration in life. Let me ask you guys a question. What would you do if you were in the same situation I'm in right now? I have this smart TV. Out. It's a Oh, sorry. Kick who out? I thought you were talking about your kids. Oh no, not that. <laughs> You're right. Kick them out. Kick them out. I have I have a smart TV, Grande. Mm-hmm. It's a great television. It's a big TV. It's, it's on huge. a like it's on a it's on wheels, so I can move it around. Like if I'm grilling, I can turn it around. I can watch. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just a great TV. I love it, right? Mm-hmm. But it's a smart TV, and I have the Spectrum cable app on the smart TV. Yeah. And then I go to the Spectrum cable app, and then I watch cable TV without cable. It's just an app. Whenever I click on the app, now it doesn't work. Now it doesn't work. Now that screws me up because I like to watch my channels, CNBC, ESPN, CNN. I like to I like to flip around news, sports, but I know where they are on the cable channels. If I don't have my Spectrum app, how the hell do I get the channels I want? What is the reasoning for and not working? It just when you click on it, it just doesn't work. It what stays on the uh it stays on the Samsung, you know, smart TV. And by the way, Netflix works and YouTube works. I mean, all the other apps work. It's the app. And I don't know what to do. And it's very frustrating for somebody like me. Delete it. Delete it. And yeah. And re-download it. I don't know. I don't know how to do okay. that. Okay. Well, you have, you have, listen, man, no sympathy for me. You have four kids that are very, very able that know how to use a smart TV. Yell at them. Get the Mexican in you and yell at them to help to help you out, man. Tired of those yeah. kids for you. I know. Thank you. Thank <laughs> no, you. I'm just saying Much with technology, you. you all those kids know how to do that. Just yell. I got to be them. able to do it. I got to be able to uninstall the app and reinstall the yeah. app. I got to be able to do it myself. I got to be able. Have to. one of them show you. All right. All right. Come on, man. Ladies and gentlemen, here is a man who is six foot seven inches tall, twisted steel, sex appeal, big sacks, big max a hot take machine, and a man known internationally as the Brown Saw. That's to the ladies. He brings a street cred from the Seven Mile Casino podcast shed from the south side of Chicago. John Browner, JB, Big Brown, the brown man in the house. By chance, can you guys hear the, the music playing or no? Let me hear. No. Okay, good. Because yeah. I was gonna go fight this guy, but I don't have to now. Who, who are you gonna fight? There's no, there's no here or there. I don't have to fight him now because you can't hear the music. Look, be a fan, be a fan. Okay, don't be a fool. Okay, don't be a coward. If you're gonna put popcorn on somebody, do it to their face. If you're gonna spit on someone, okay, do it to their face. If you're you can root for your team all you want. That's what sports is all about. Watching the Knicks and the Hawks, two teams I don't really have that much interest in, but it's a great game because the atmosphere in Madison Square Garden, that's amazing. It's beautiful. Welcome back, fans. But then you get the fans that you just why, bro? You're not gonna help the team by pouring popcorn on West Russell Westbrook when he's hurt or spitting on Trey Young when he's taking the ball out of bounds. Like what a coward. If you were, if you don't know these two things, because I'm I'm doing my thing while I tell the end of the story before I tell the beginning. <laughs> Last night the Wizards were, were playing the, the Sixers. I love the recognition. Yeah, you know the Wizards were playing the Sixers. Russell Westbrook got injured, and as he's walking out of the tunnel, somebody just pours popcorn on him. Mm-hmm. Popcorn's harmless. You, it's not going to hurt him. He's a big, strong man. But it's the act of someone. Who would have the audacity to pour popcorn on a guy like, oh, I'm doing my part. No, you're not. And if it wasn't for the five security guards, he would have pounded that guy. To the guy in the second row of the Knicks game, 
who, while Trey Young was taking the ball out of bounds, spit on him on camera, you're a real coward. Because what you never do, you don't spit on the man. You don't do that. It's highly disrespectful. And if you, if an, even a man of Trey Young's size, you spit on him, you're going to have to throw hands. Period, point blank, end of story. So the Knicks and the, six, and the Sixers, whoever your security team is, those two people never attend another game, ever, ever. They don't attend another event in that arena. The NBA has to protect their players. They have to, or you will get another malice in the palace because these guys ain't going ain't to be taking that. They're not, and nor should they. So be a I'm fan. trying to see it. I'm trying. I, the the Trey Young thing I didn't see. The the, the Russell West the Westbrook thing I did see. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm looking here now to see, and I I don't. Where am I supposed to see the guy both spit? Fans man? Been, both fans have been identified and and thus kicked out forever of those two arenas. By the way, G good as, know, as they should have been. Because I know I understand what you're going coming from. But my question to Russell Westbrook, to LeBron James, to the NBA is. When you have people that close to players, which I always thought was ridiculously close in the first place in, in, in right. the NBA, what do you want them to do? Does every fan get a security guard? Like, at what point do you just push the fans back? That's my only thing is like, it's a, the courtside seats are ridiculously close to players. And you're always going to have incidents. Remember uh, courtside Karen in Atlanta yeah. with LeBron yep. uh -huh. earlier this year? So when you have mm -hmm. people that close, like I understand the frustration, I understand the safety aspect of it, but what is the solution? Okay, well let's let's also talk about something else here for a quick second. First of all, what we're talking about right now is what Charlie Hoffman was talking about Monday afternoon. That's true on the show when Phil Mickelson is walking up the 18th this past weekend at the PGA Championship, and his arm gets pulled by fans and security is not there's no layer the fans are touching phil mickelson um same thing with brooks kepka he you know he says that somebody may have tried to hurt his uh repaired knee i don't know what happened but my point is he was in a crowd of fans that guy's walking up to the finish of the pga championship he's amongst these fans um the guys who sit closest to the court people think are the most civilized because they're in the best seats in the house. They are they're not. not. They're some of the biggest dicks going. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, and, and the guy in Philly, no one tells those who, people who no ever. Right. The, 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 the guy in Philly who throws the popcorn on Westbrook, he's actually above he Westbrook's walking through the tunnel and there's a, uh, there's like an awning, if you will, mm -hmm. to create a tunnel. And you know why it's there? Cause of that. So people don't throw stuff at the players, beer and what have you. And so this guy was able to, it seemed like, get his popcorn underneath it looked like, you know, somehow. It's just a, and, it's just a banner, though. It's not even a real – if you watch soccer, they create real tunnels for players, mm -hmm. like real – where they have, like, these metal sides and then they, they have, like, tarps fully covering them. But in the NBA, it's just like this flat tarp that has – Yeah, right. Get right under it. It's no big deal. Right. Right. This is and gonna... the thing is, it's it's Philadelphia. Like, like you you're surprised. There's, like a, there's a surprise, right? No, this is no surprise. This is Philly. Philadelphia, forget about booing Santa Claus or booing Mike Schmidt. Forget about all that nonsense. This is the place where they have a jail cell inside their football stadium because they know people are idiots. I have so many and so many friends who have stories of what has happened to them at games in Philadelphia. These people are morons for the most part. Now, for those of you that are from Philly out there, you know, and you're my people and you're like, yo, hold on. I'm from Philly. Hey, look, you know who you are, but you also know that Philly fans are idiots. By the way, like Dodger fans, what, what the hell is up with Dodger fans? They're always fighting, always fighting. If you're the fighting amongst fans, I 100% get it's a face to face situation. But for this guy who spit on Trey or attempted to spit on Trey Young or spit towards Trey Young, mm -hmm. you're a real coward. Like if right. you if you spit on the man, you got to see me. Or you gonna, listen, mm -hmm. you spit on me, you got to whip my ass. And that's that's it. That's it. That's it. Because you you should not be kicking or spitting on people. Period. End of story. So it's just pure cowardice. I don't know what what in a fan makes you think I'm doing. I'm against them too. Like, no, you're not. Like, 
The Knicks, well, what, the Knicks what, players what don't even this? like you. What, what makes you think this? You ready? I'm going to spit on him. He's going to turn around. And you know what? I want a piece of him. Dude, he's playing in a basketball game. Right. You you got tickets to watch a basketball game. What do you want to fight the players that you're going to spit at a guy or throw popcorn at a guy? I mean, I still don't see the spit. I mean, maybe I'm just not. Look at the it. girl Look react. Look at right. the girl react. So I'm going to scrub okay. it slow. So you'll see it's this guy in a black jersey right behind the girl in the red yeah. tank top. Yeah. Look yeah. at yeah. there's like a loogie that comes in right now. And then you see her react. Uh-huh. Boom. Right there. Ooh. Oh, it's a mm-hmm. very if you it's difficult to watch on this screen, I'm sure. But um, if you just search on Twitter, I, I just, Trey Young spit. Look yeah. at the girl react. You yeah. see a loogie coming over her head. Oh, she must hurt. Yeah. That looks like yeah. 50 cent, too. That is 50 cent. Wait a minute. No way. That's 50 Wait cent. In the mask 50 cent right there. Yeah, really? Oh, that yeah. is. Wow. wow. 50 cent? Oh, 50 cent. oh, 50. Oh, 50. Man, well, Fiddy should have stood up. Fiddy should have turned. He didn't even do nothing. Fiddy should have turned on and shot that man. Fiddy, your girl shot got him. spit on, bro. You ain't even do nothing. Wow, you supposed to be an OG, homie. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, homie. Damn. Yeah, you supposed to be OG. Damn. All right, let, let's do this then. You ready? Puffy let's... too, by the way. Looking real oh, puffy in the front row. Thick, bro. You better be careful. Come after you. Some, hey, uh, let's transition yeah. though from from this situation where fans throw stuff or spit at players okay um to fan on fan violence i mean dude what's going on does this it, do you guys think this is a there's a that there's more fighting an echo well there's definitely an echo now definitely an echo now most definitely an echo. who do you blame alex well come on how do you like browners browners backed off wait all three Look of us it. on there's screen. three browners people there's three people on screen Two of us wearing yeah. headphones. Who do you think has an echo? Don't you do that to me. No. <laughs> Put no. headphones on. Put headphones on. See if the echo goes away. All right. Hold on. Yeah. There's a hundred percent. It's a hundred percent that we're hearing. How do you hear us? Ourselves through his headphones. What? How do you hear what? us? What? He doesn't. <laughs> I have no idea what you're saying. I'm just waiting for my turn to talk. I'm saying. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> How does he hear us if he doesn't Freaking have headphones? Bro. I don't get he it. doesn't. He doesn't listen to a word we say. He just reads our lips, and he's like, "I yeah, think right. it's my turn to talk." Yeah, it's oh, my turn to talk. <laughs> oh wow, the echo's gone. <laughs> yep, headphones on, echo gone. Hey man, don't be blaming me for that. I ain't did nothing by no echo. All right, let me do this. You ready? Let me have a minute, and then I'm gonna go right into this from from fans spitting or on or throwing things at athletes to fan on fan violence. Man, oh man, what is going on with you people out there? Uh, before we do, I want to just say, Hey, we are bringing it to you today from the seven mile casino studios, Alex. I don't know if you can do this for everybody that's watching, but if you can put up the seven mile casino website, um, the reason I ask you to do that is because that's why I'd ask everybody else to do the same thing. Like if you're thinking about wanting to go out and do something, having a little bit of fun, um, playing some table games, you know, getting a little action going, Come on down to Seven Mile Casino. Breathe easy, play hard. You can go to their website, sevenmilecasino.com. Spell out the word seven. And you can read all about the safety protocols that they put in place when they were innovating, when they were leading the industry on how to do this during COVID. Um, And you'll find out everything that you need to know. Probably this being the most important, they're open 24-7. You know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, Great place. Awesome food. The people who work there are like, yo, come have some fun. And that's what you're going to have when you go to Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. All right. So everybody sends us fight videos now every day. Even Cousin Nancy. Really? What'd she do? She's texting, no me. She's texting <laughs> me and she's like, hey, here's for your show. And I'm like, listen, but if, 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 if it got to you, it's been already in my Twitter for about a couple hours. Okay. So thank you. <laughs> and I appreciate all the great friends. My mentions are all, twi- are all fights now. I don't know if they're old. I don't know if they're new. I literally have to sort through fights and be like okay which one's worthy for the show every day now i i listen i here's my question for you guys savages are out. are more are right are more people fighting like just more than ever before in life or are we just seeing more videos of people fighting like in other words if if i told you in 2019 there were 100 fights and now in 2021, are there 500 fights? I mean, have we have we increased our percentage of fighting with each other out there? Like, have we become less civilized 
No, I over think the, we're recording yeah, everything. We're recording. I, okay, I, you guys just think it's uh, yeah. you just think it's recording. Yes. Okay, you don't. Yeah, I said yesterday. You don't think there's think, more fighting. I think there's platforms for everybody now. Everybody, because yet, like, we'll show the fight. Not only do I have one angle of the fight, I have three angles of the same fight. <laughs> yeah. That's what I mean yeah. by it's being recorded by everybody and being posted everywhere, and everything nowadays goes viral. There Honestly, was, yeah. that's, there was, that's uh, the difference. There was a fight in the bleachers of the White Sox game, and it's all women brawling. We That's even, got yeah. four we angles. Didn't even, we didn't even show it because I was like, yeah, I, 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 I didn't think it was that good. It was. It wasn't close enough, really. I right. Felt like, like I don't think there's got to be some some connection now. Like I, I think I'm we, becoming desensitized to fights now because I feel as if I need some clean connection to show a fight. We only show fights where there's clean contact with the punches. We right. do. We, it's like hair pulling or grappling. We don't show any of those videos. Mm -hmm. We show well, clean cold the dude, cocks. The dude on the street yeah. elevated the game, man. When he roundhouse yeah. kicked the shirtless bald guy. <laughs> Listen, it's like when John Jones came into the UFC. You better step your game up. It's different now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Straight shots only around here. Mm, the Chuck Liddell's I'm gonna you need some, have some real, real skill now. But, dude, people are vicious, man. People are freaking vicious out there, dude. You like know, who? you get into a fight with the wrong dude, and yep. he's just vicious. Like this, there, there was this fight yesterday. The Dodgers are playing the Astros. And you know, we talked about this. All these Dodger fans showed up because they wanted to, you know, send their hate for the Astros organization. And they paraded down the streets of Houston. They, it sounded like they took over Minute Maid Park. They were all together as a group. It wasn't like, hey, there's five Dodger fans and there's six over there and there's two down there. No, dude, there were like, hundreds maybe maybe even more maybe even a thousand they, yeah i mean but they were there already they they pulled in to houston looking for trouble but because they're dodger fans but but the fight was one guy with his yeah. kid and partner yeah. not part of that giant group that we showed yesterday because i told you right. no one's going into a sea of 500 dodger fans and going for a fight you get these yeah. one-offs where it looks like this dude has some professional training. Like when we show it, like that's not this dude's fight, first fight. That is for a fact. But it's it's kind of what I was saying yesterday. Is that group of fans, no one's going to mess with them. There's too many of them. You're looking mm -hmm. for the group of four, for the group, group of two. That's where you're going to get the fights, the one-off guys. Well, I don't know what happened here, okay? But these Houston Astro fans, and there's two of them, and there's this guy from wearing his Dodger gear. And again, as Alex points out, it, it looks like he's sitting there with his female person, companion. wife, partner, friend, companion, whatever, and a little kid. And, he, and, and then, dude, all hell breaks loose. So look, we're just getting rolling, okay? For all of you that send us tons of fight videos, awesome. They're funny. I mean, I guess as long as people don't get hurt badly. Um, we'll play this one. We'll play this one coming back for you. For those of you watching, you'll see it. For those of you listening, you'll hear reactions. Stick around, everybody. Hey, great friends. Let me talk to you for a minute about something I like to talk about, which is saving money. Seems like a lot of our sponsors help you save money. And I know I'm very much into that now because I will tell you truthfully, like I lived carelessly for a long time. I, I mean, I say it like that, meaning that um, I wasn't as on top of how to save money as I could have been. So let me tell you about Gabby and I'll just direct you to a website, gabby.com slash great friends. Let me help you save. This is the average just by the way, Gabby customers receive uh, and, and save about $900 a year on auto and home insurance. So think about it. Um, you've got homeowners insurance. Uh, you've got auto insurance, obviously. And whoever you're using for your insurance, you got to them for some reason. It could be that you just been with them forever. Well, here's what Gabby does. You go into Gabby's website, Gabby.com, use ours, great friends, and you get a true comparison. This is apples for apples. And just by the way, don't worry. They're not going to steal your data. They're not going to sell it. You're not going to get spammed. None of that kind of nonsense. Okay. This is just an apples for apples. Find out who's got a better deal. So for example, I went to Gabby.com. I put in my current auto insurance for, cause I got my car and I got three kids. Okay. And when I was able to put in what company I use, they came back to me with, here's a whole bunch of other companies, exact same coverage. 
but instead you're going to save this much money. And for me, I want to say it came out to about $600. So dude, $600 for the year is 50 bucks a month. And that's 50 bucks more that you've got in your pocket. So I'm trying to help you out because I'm trying to learn myself. Like you can take control of these things that seem like a pain in the ass and they're not. So use Gabby, go to our website, gabby.com slash great friends, uh, put your policy to the test, get better insurance with Gabby. It's totally free. There's no obligation. Go to gabby.com slash great friends. That's Gabby, G A B I gabby.com slash great friends, gabby.com slash great friends. And guys, there's no downside to this. You use it, you make the comparison. You see if you can save money. If you can, you do. If you don't, you don't. Gabby.com slash great friends. Hey, great friends. What's happening on a Thursday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew? We are on the radio of 1090. So if you're driving around anywhere in Southern California between the hours of 3 p.m. and 7 p.m., you'll find us on the radio at 1090. If you are watching on YouTube and you're with us and you're hanging out every day, I love this. You see, I didn't realize it until I went fishing this past weekend. I'm still just going off on this fishing trip. But, you know, when you're talking to Joe Rigby and you're talking to Bernard Thompson and Al Long and Jeremy and Danny and you're talking to all these guys, you find out where they're listening, where they're watching, what they're doing. And so, hey, fellas, I know you're out there today sending you guys much love. And for everybody else, that's with us, particularly on YouTube, man, I appreciate you guys. Cause yesterday I was asking you click the share arrow, click the thumbs up on the butt, uh, you know, right underneath the video, um, leave a comment, you know, and you guys are doing it. And then if you go onto Twitter and you follow us at Kaplan and crew, when Alex puts out the link for the show, just retweet it or say something quote, retweet it. The more we, the small army that lives here on YouTube, the more we all circulate the show, the bigger things grow. And so we just appreciate you guys being part of the team, you know, really seriously. So there you go. There's every way to get us. Kaplan and crew.com. You get everything we do. All right. Along with Grande and the Brown man, fellas, we started the broadcast today talking about how fans are throwing things or spitting on players. Isn't it weird guys? Like last year when sports came back, nobody got to see it. Nobody got to be there and feel it. Fans were on video screens. Now that fans are back, they're acting as uncivilized, it seems. Not a surprise in New York or Philadelphia. But they're acting as uncivilized as the people who we constantly see getting into fights, whether they're on planes or in stadiums. Did anybody see the video, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, of the woman who punched the flight attendant? when they landed in San Diego, knocked out two of the flight attendant's teeth. That woman had a serious right hand. That woman also had a rage problem because the way <laughs> she turned around and just started hauling on that flight attendant was completely uncalled for. See, th this is when I think people don't think they can catch them hands because the way she just hit that lady multiple times and people did nothing. It took, some, it took a man to step in and be like, yo, yo, stop, stop, stop. Like, what? Over what? Oh, a mask? Really? Now she can't never fly again. Good luck riding a horse from California to Detroit. <laughs> well, I think she was going from Sacramento to San Diego. So I guess if you really had to ride a horse, but there are other options. I mean, you could like probably take a train, a bus, um, drive. If you take a bus a bike. from San Diego to Sacramento, you might as well be on the horse. Is there a worse thing? as an american citizen than being on the no fly list like if you are uh, oh, if you, oh, oh if you are, you're a terrorist you're a degenerate if you're a, if you're a person that can travel in a and, and just i'm not even talking about abroad i'm just saying if you want to go visit a family in Texas <laughs> and you're on the no fly list is there anything worse or more inconvenient like oh my, gosh. my god Talk so about wait, fomo so Wait, so you you get on the no fly list for punching a flight attendant? Is that like published somewhere? It's like, hey, just to be clear. Well, what else? Wait a minute. What what you think gets you on the list of outside of terrorism? Yeah, that doesn't get you on the list. I don't know what Nothing gets will. you on the list. At least for that particular airline. You know, maybe if you do it on Spirit, you don't that you you get a reward, but I'm just saying like Spirit's I don't, okay. Airbus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think if you if you get in a physical altercation on an airplane, that's yeah. that's bad. If you punch yeah. a flight attendant, 
Oh, dude. I, you ain't flying on my airline for the rest of your you might, life. You might as well go punch the pilot too, then, because yeah. you ain't yeah. never get on another plane. All right, so so let me try and make a point, and and tell me if anybody's with me here on this. Here's what I'm saying: whether I'm watching fans get into fights with one another in ball games, or if I'm watching a, a passenger on an airplane get into a fight with a flight attendant. I think the last year and a half of people being locked up and now people being vaccinated and businesses back open and the country moving around and people being closer to one another than they have been in the last year and a half, I'm contending that people are much more irritable and on edge than ever before. And I honestly feel like, like we went from, they stopped us from going anywhere, stay home. And we, we flatlined for all this time that we're home. And then all of a sudden we come out and we're just on fire. We're just coming in every place kind of hot. We're just trending upward. We're, we're, we're vibrating and we're, we're around people for the first time. Get off of me. Don't touch me. Don't say that to me. I'll kick your ass. I mean, it's like, I just feel like the earth is vibrating right now as people are touching each other and going shoulder to shoulder. And I think we're seeing a, a a rash of violence because people are irritated. Maybe I'm way off. I think you and yeah, tell uh, me. I'm not going to get me. dark or heavy, but I will say, I think you think too highly of humans. Really? I think in the last year and a half, we saw, the great in people and the bad in people. And I'm not even just talking about fights. I'm talking about something so simple as wearing a mask to a grocery store. We saw right. some gnarly, gnarly videos of just simple things. So I don't agree with you. I think that people have always been crazy, wild, stupid, drunk, high. I think that it is just everybody's recording it because when the guy showed up in Santee rocking his KKK hoodie, yeah. nobody stopped it, but a lot of people recorded it when, when, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I just think that everybody's, and I'll show, we'll, we'll get to it here shortly. The fight that we're, that you're talking about in Houston, one fight, three different angles, all went viral, all over 500,000 views. One fight. I just think everything is being recorded. There's a million different platforms to put it on, whether it's TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. And then once the local news picks it up, everybody's picking it up. So for me, I don't see a difference in humans as far as fighting goes. I just think that it's being recorded and being not only being recorded, it's being published everywhere. Yeah, I, I just think that what you're saying is right. More people are willing to go, oh, there's there's going to be an altercation over there. Used to be, hey, maybe I should kind of, hey, step in. Hey, guys, come on, please. You know, I got my kids here. Or walk away. My wife here, you know. Yeah, or hey, let's get out of the way because this is about to get crazy, mm -hmm. you know. But instead, it's like, oh, hell yeah. Oh, kick his freaking ass. Oh, I got my phone right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't wait to post this. I've never had more than 100 likes on my Instagram before. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is going to go viral in a big way. I'm going to pick up a lot of new followers today. Now, that guy right there, I mean, he's probably really badly hurt. But me, I got this video, yo. Ooh, likes, baby. Give me them likes. And let's not forget, man. Listen, every, the three of us, put up your phone and I'll put us on screen. I'm being serious. These are professional cameras. There you go professional cameras that take high quality 4k video five years ago you weren't getting these kinds of videos you were some people were out there still using motorola razors so and nothing against the razor i love that phone it was a great phone but i'm just talking about the quality of video that you can record on your phone and how far you mm -hmm. can zoom in on those samsung phones like where you can take mm -hmm. pictures of the moon and you can see the flag that actually happened browner like I'm telling stop, you, Browner, stop it, stop it, Browner. What, Browner? Let, let's let's not gloss over something here for a quick second. <laughs> yeah. Why why are you holding four iPhones? Because he said hold up your phone. I know, but why do you, you have you four, four iPhones? Listen, man, you asked me to hold the phones up. I held the phones up. I know, but are but you the question that everybody out of the would trunk ask of your car or something? Dude, everybody would have the same question. You have five like, phones? Why are you? Why do you have five phones? Man, your business, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you, know, oh, wow, dude. You, asked, you asked me to hold the phone so for real you got phone, you got bro. five cell phones on you right now right and they're all able to turn on and, and function <laughs> yeah what good would it do me to have five phones if they i did? don't know i'm asking i'm trying to get to the bottom five phones mm, what do you think that's all what, about i know well, what that's about i know me too what baby mama phone side piece phone <laughs> business phone right Mm-hmm. Yeah. Listen, man. Listen. Listen. Tori holistic phone. Listen. Until we until we make that real real legit TV money, I gotta have five phones. Yeah, he's got to have one phone just to do social media for Bill Hagen for ten ninety. Hey, no, hey listen. Forgot about listen. that one. You got to post yeah. when you got to post, man. Everybody got their yeah. responsibilities. You got five I phones. So. Five. Congratulations, phones. A... Dodgers on the World Series. <laughs> no wonder he never gets a hold of us. No, no, no yeah. wonder he can't reach this mofo. Yeah, because he checks yeah. his. He's... We don't have the right number. We have the right number. <laughs> Freaking browner. <laughs> Why? And also, too, I'm not even surprised. Like, it, like it actually makes sense that he has five phones. He's that kind of guy. True. Yeah. yeah True. Like, I'm not surprised. Oh, facts, bro. Facts, bro. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, All right. So here's the deal. Fights. Remember last week? <laughs> remember last week when, um, or maybe it was even a week and change ago. Remember this? The video of the Padres fan who in Colorado comes up to this dude, walks right up to him and punches him out in his face with one punch. Like we all watched that and went, Whoa, like that's that. First of all, well-thrown punch, well-landed punch and no melee breaks out of any kind. You know what I mean? Cause the one guy who got knocked out, his friend was like, yo man, take a seat. I'm watching the game. You know, and the guy's like, yeah, I'm sleeping. Cause that guy punched me out. And my sunglasses went flying. Thanks for helping me out, bro. So we all saw that punch and we were like, damn, people are getting crazy. But something happened in this Dodgers Astros game in Houston. By the way, Astros won. So the Dodgers who'd been on fire, I think they'd won nine straight was, mm-hmm. the, was the stat. It was eight straight. Yeah. They they finally lost. Yeah. Okay. So they they lost. Dodgers lost. Padres won. This was yesterday. Dodgers, uh, Padres playing way earlier in today. I think the game was started at like 10 o'clock in the morning. So um I don't know what happened. I mean, I wish that we'd see video of, of what precipitated this fight, but you got to watch what's going on here. You talk about people getting violent and gnarly. There's this Dodger fan and he, and, 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 oh, he took a good shot. I didn't see that. Yeah, he, he took did. a pretty good shot. Um, but the guy in the blue t-shirt, like his buddy is getting wailed on and he doesn't do anything, but you know why? Cause he got punched first. The guy in the blue shirt with the hat on backwards, this Dodger fan punched both of these guys. First, he punched the one guy. Then he punched the second guy. And then he just started beating up the second guy. The first guy stands up, and he's not doing anything to help his buddy. His, I counted this, dude. This guy right here, the guy who got punched, he got punched legit 10 times right in the face. And then down, the girlfriend. not defending himself. And, and the girlfriend like goes because he's like, oh, OK, now I'm up. Let's get going. And and the girlfriend pulls him back and he goes down because, dude, it listen. If you're a regular guy and you get into a fight by act, like, hey, I wasn't planning on getting into a fight. I mean, Did something happen? happened. I had to defend myself, but you're not able to defend yourself and you get punched 10 times. Boom. Boom, boom. You get punched 10 times. I'll ask you guys. That happened yesterday. The guy on the receiving end. What's going on in his life right now? Seriously. He hurting. hurting. Face swollen. Mm -hmm. He's definitely working with that cut because he was bleeding. Probably got a concussion the way he fell backwards and the way his head was hitting that seat. You don't feel good today. You don't feel good about that. And you feel like you didn't even get a piece. I'm going to assume that he slept on the couch last night because his girlfriend was embarrassed because he got freaking jerked around like that uh he's definitely definitely embarrassed as well because he went viral people recognized yeah. him getting beat up for his friends recognize and, him getting beat up and the guy who beat you up his girl was throwing punches too and your girl didn't throw a single punch dude the girl so we, we on the, i'm on the, i'm on the couch for multiple reasons the girl in the dodgers the guy's girlfriend in the dodgers she was also mm-hmm. wearing a Dodgers shirt. I'll play it again. She landed a solid ass right hook, man. Who'd she hit? I didn't see her hit. Anybody. I'll play it one more time. Keep an eye on the blonde right. in the blue because she. I think yeah. she hits um, right there. Boom! Right there. Who'd she hit? The, the guy, guy in the hat. Oh, she hit guy in the hat. Knocked oh, his glasses the, down. The guy standing up. Yeah, the friend yeah. that did nothing. Oh, or, the friend or, that was scared. Or, or the, oh, look at right. She punched him. Oh, right there. 
Oh, the lady gets in the way. I, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. She's punching the guy that's down. She's punching the guy no, standing up. The guy. Yeah, the guy who backed him off with a clean shot at the end. Ooh. Oh my god! Oh, Let me tell you, man, this guy, this Dodger guy, and I can't believe the guy in the blue shirt. He lands one, two, three punches. Dude, your boy is getting his ass kicked. And, and then them. the and then the Dodger fan, he's a scary dude because he's like this. Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. Look, man. Give me more. Who wants hey, it? Come uh, two on. things there. Two things. One, the friend also we're no longer friends. You never wanted that smoke. Oh, no. Hell no, no. Secondly, it's like the same thing with the Rockies guys in the Tulowitzki jersey. Same thing. That guy got a punch to, off to get him off him, but he just stood there. Secondly, I don't really want to stereotype dudes that fight, but I'm going to. If you're wearing a jersey and there's nothing underneath, you're ready to fight. And that man, I Ooh, I don't listen. Point. There's no precursor. Which guy? To what, which guy? the guy in the, the, Dodger who, the Dodger? Dodger jersey guy got on a t-shirt underneath. No, he shirt. don't. No, he don't. He's shirtless. Yeah, he That's do. bare chest, baby. He's That's bare, bare chest. Man. No, he's running man. back. No, dude, look at that. No, he's got a black t-shirt on. It's ripped, actually. Look. Oh, see? okay. Oh, maybe it's not ripped. Maybe he's wearing some kind of like wrestling singlet. Maybe you're right. <laughs> he's ready to go, dude. <laughs> Bro, if, right, hey, hey, if yeah. he showed up in a wrestling singlet, he was definitely ready. <laughs> Yeah, look at this guy just oh, bashing this guy's him. face into the ground, like into this chair. You know, guy got no defense. And then there's this female security person who shows up. I she gotta, ain't exactly moving fast either. I got to tell you, let's if you don't want to fight, please don't go talking crazy to these games, man. Because as y'all can clearly see, people are throwing hands, men and women. So if you ain't ready to fight, just be cool. Just cheer for your team and boo the other team. Don't make it personal with other people. Because as you clearly see, some people like this guy showing up to throw hands. Dude, how about this? How about this? Go to a game, okay? And watch it. Don't throw popcorn at players. What a novel idea. Don't spit on players. Even better. And avoid conflict at all cost. Hmm. I mean, my God, people, please. If, if you can't fight, if you cannot fight, do not get yourself in a in a position of being able to being have being forced to defend yourself against a person who clearly came to fight. I mean, the guy in the Dodger jersey and his girl. Listen, his girl. first he punches the one guy, then he punches the other guy, and the guy who gets punched the second time, he's the guy who gets punched ten times in the head. Why is it the guy in the Dodger jersey doesn't? Like and I can't blame him because because now you're 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 fighting your, you're just your fighting. adrenaline is flying and it's life and death or so it seems you know and the guy who's getting his face bashed in and there's blood all over his face like why isn't the Dodger guy like okay he's had enough I got him two three times I'm good no ten times yeah dominance domination yeah. okay nobody gotta, pulled him up get these, in stadium right. fights you got to get pulled off also yeah. who's the worst person there's three people on 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 my poll for you guys today. Okay, I want you to put this on sided because this is, already sounds like a great question. The guy who spit at Trey Young, mm -hmm. the guy who threw popcorn at Russell Westbrook, or the guy who fought Astros fans with his daughter sitting right next to him, his little baby girl right next to him. Yeah, I will, who's a oh, this, who's this, a, who's worst, a worst who's person? a worst? This is, easy, this is very easy for me. This is very easy for me. It's the yeah. guy who spit. Yeah, because the guy who fought in front of his daughter, that's not the worst thing he's done in front of his kid because his girl was throwing punches, too. So they're probably a degenerate family raising a little degenerate as well. So oh. that, that's not really. <laughs> don't put the kid into it. Me. I feel bad for the kid. That's not a don't don't listen, bring listen, her into listen. it. Listen, apples, don't, I, apples don't fall far from the tree, my friend. They don't just not a stand. It looked like the mom was part of it, too. So I, there's, right. there's not a lot of great hope for that little girl. I, I, I feel right. terrible for her. I feel terrible for the little girl that that's what she's used to seeing, probably. But right. as far as a worst person goes, I don't have kids, and I feel like that guy's the worst person. <laughs> the spitter, dude. The, the, the spitter for two reasons. One, Trey Young's back was turned. So you're a coward because you thought you could spit on somebody and get away with it. If you chose to fight a person face-to-face, -face, that's kind of manly. He just couldn't take it. And mm -hmm. the popcorn oh. guy, he's second for me. Because, again, dude. you know the guy can't get to you. Dude, let me tell you something. The guy in Colorado who got punched by the Padres fan – that guy is sitting somewhere going, dude, could have been a lot worse. <laughs> right, right. I don't know, man. I don't know because, I, listen, you get knocked out on one clean punch. You don't take mm -hmm. that much punishment. That guy yesterday, he was yeah. bleeding. He probably right, got, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, this guy dude, yesterday. it could have been worse. Oh, yeah, okay. It could have been okay, worse. Got it, got the, it. The, the Rockies fans like, I only got punched once. Yeah. This guy got punched 10 times.
Yeah. All right. Hey, give me one second. I want to mention some friends of ours. And this is a company called Gabby, G-A-B-I. And I want you guys to use their website, gabby.com slash great friends. So that actually comes directly to our promotional site. And here's what happens. Okay. You go to Gabby, you plug into, uh, into their website, what auto insurance or homeowners insurance you're using. You tell them the brand, you tell them the policy, you know, like what kind of stuff you got going on. And then immediately they come back to you with options. They say, okay, this is the company you use. This is what you pay. This is the policy you have. Now here's a comparison. Here's other name brand companies. Here's the exact same insurance. And here's how much you can save. And you're not going to get spammed. They don't do that. They're not selling any of your data. It's not like that. Okay. They're just trying to help you save money. And I know that sounds like, well, why? Because uh, you know why? Because everybody's making a transaction here. So look, I saved $600 by changing my auto insurance by using Gabby. My mother is now on it. She's like, did you really do it? Did you? Did you really save $600? And I'm like, yes, I Ma. And so you can too. You're trying to save money everywhere you can. Gabby.com slash great friends, Gabby.com slash great friends. And wouldn't you know that they monitor all of this? Like, are the great friends responsive to Gabby? I tell them, yes, the great friends will go on to Gabby. They will check it out. They will save money. You can, you should. Gabby.com slash great friends. Alex, I'm looking forward to you posting that on Cited. Who's a worse person? <laughs> guy who spits on Trey Young, guy who throws popcorn on Russell Westbrook, or guy who kicks the ever living hell out of a dude in front of his little daughter while she's bawling her eyes out at a ball game. Oh man. Yeah. Um, wow. I'm working on it now. I'm just trying to find all the YouTube links so I could put the appropriate video on as well. Oh, sweet. Sweet. That that's that's that'll be good. All right. Stick around, everybody. A lot more to get to because this wasn't really so much about games that took place but rather about fans acting like morons at these games. Hey, great friends, what is happening on a Thursday afternoon? We spent a lot of time talking in the last segment about fan behavior at ball games, and it's not just the way fans behave towards the players or are in Philly and New York, but it's also the way the fans are behaving with one another and massive brawls inside stadiums. So we'll actually move on from there as we welcome you back inside the seven mile casino studios. And uh, we will move in to some other stuff that's happening like um, tonight, Lakers and Suns game three. And this is to me, this is the game where the Suns either claw back into it and make you think they've got at least a shot or the Lakers just put them away. And I realize it's only game three, but really like take total control of the series. At least that's the way I feel about tonight's game. Um, also coming up, this is something that Padre fans really got to keep their eye on. And that is the giants and the Dodgers starting a four game series tonight. And we'll get to that coming up. And the Padres played earlier today um, in Milwaukee, and then we'll move on. Where are they going? Are they going to St. Louis next? Houston. Where are they headed? Houston. Well, they're headed to Houston. Okay. Houston. And I don't think gonna we're going to be, get, uh, I don't, go ahead. I don't think we're going to get fight videos. I don't think we're getting fight videos from Padres oh. Astros. I don't think so. Well, do I don't think? know, man. Cause that dude in Colorado got banned in Colorado. Maybe he wants to see him. Houston's not that far away. So <laughs> just saying <laughs> he could be on a most wanted list though. You know what I mean? Like he don't could. let this guy into stadiums. He's a one punch knockout artist. This guy, He's on you, know what stadium list. you know what it yeah. is too, Scott? Cause you asked that question last segment. What do you think about, um, you know, is it people just acting crazier or being more recorded? I also think there's like this thing going on between Padres and Dodger fans where Padre mm -hmm. fans want every Dodger fight to go viral to show how bad Dodger fans are. And Dodger fans are now also saying, well, what about you guys? And they, they, they sent everybody sent us that Rockies fan or the Rockies mm -hmm. fight. So we could see if there's any altercation in Houston, I guarantee you we will see it. Oh, yeah. Dodger fans will celebrate that. Seriously. Listen, I don't know this other here's what I do know. Dodger fans to me are as violent and as dangerous as Raider fans. They're the same person. There are a lot of Raider fans in Los Angeles. There's a good chance that these are all Raider fans who just wear blue during baseball season. 
That's good. It's a very good chance. It's a very good chance. All right. So let's do this. Then. Let's let's just move on and we'll get into some of the stories that we really want to get to. For those of you that are listening on 1090, happy to have everybody along. Last night, I was a true story. I was sitting in a restaurant and uh, Rachel and I were, were in this restaurant. This is in like the eastern part of Carmel Valley. And um, I'm sitting there at this at a table and uh, we, I think we were watching one of the games is on and I wasn't paying attention, obviously. And um, this guy comes up to the table and he goes, hey, man, I just want to say big fan, blah, blah, blah. Love you and Billy Ray. Love what you're what you're up to. He's like, um, somebody told me you guys are back on the radio now. And I said, yeah, I said, um, you said, you, you know, you know what's going on. He's like, well, I get the, I get your text messages. So I, I get your YouTube, but I didn't, you know, I don't listen on the radio anymore. I've, my driving patterns have changed. I'm like, dude, we're back. We're back on 1090. You listen every day between 3 and 7 p.m. You're going to find us just like the old days. And he's like, you, I can't tell you how many hours I spent with you guys and all the years of stuff that, you know, you got me through. I'm like, great. Awesome. We're back on 1090. I love it. Thank you. Um, yeah, we're here on YouTube. And I say to all the YouTubers, guys, click the share button, send it out to your pals. You can text them. You can tweet them. If you go onto Twitter and you follow us at Kaplan and crew, when Alex sends out the links to the show, retweet them, quote, retweet them, get involved, uh, engage. And, um, and if you guys are catching up to us on TV tonight on channel four in San Diego, channel four in Santa Barbara and channel 118 in Palos Verdes in Orange County, if you're catching us on TV, glad to have everybody along. Okay. Grande Brown, man, let's, uh, let, let's go back to something that happened on yesterday's show for a moment. We put up a slide yesterday that a uh, local television station, KUSI put out on social media and it pretty much was just um, an accounting of the Dean Spanos charger issues, financial issues. And um, we just put it up because we thought it was entertaining and interesting. But don't you know, I mean, every charger oh. troll, and there's only like three of them with like 10 accounts. They don't like this. They don't like this at all. They don't like facts? I, well, listen, here's what I'm hoping for. I like drama. Okay, so so when it comes to drama, if you put the slide back up for one more second, let's take a look at these numbers. You're talking about the National Football League, an ownership. You're talking about parents who left billions of dollars to their children who are now in this sort of debt. Um, you're talking about family feud. You're talking about Los Angeles, California, the, the mega market, the region of Southern California. So when you combine... Fame, ultra wealth, biggest league in sports, uh, biggest market in the country. Second, you know, when you combine all of that, now you got juice. Okay. Now you got a nice, juicy drama. So, look, to you three or four guys out there that have those multiple accounts, it's okay. <laughs> I, I'll like every tweet you send me telling me what an ass I am. Okay. I'll like every single tweet you send me. I'll retweet them. I don't mind. Okay. You you guys don't seem to understand. I like it. I'm asking for it. I'm dishing it out and I'm taking it. Look, man, if if you think that they owe a legit billion, like that's a that's what a billion dollars of debt looks like. And the sister's going, hey, just pay me off. They ain't got them. He Dean ain't got that kind of money, cause that's if you got to pay her off and she's one third of it. I'm assuming, right? That whatever the numbers are, it's about four hundred million. He ain't got four hundred million, cause if he did, he wouldn't have these problems. Like that's cash, cause I guarantee you, she's gonna want that money in cash. She don't want no cut. She don't want no 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 bond. She want that money in cash, bruh. He ain't got it. Nah, she wants Bitcoin, dog. Listen, Bitcoin nah, is down, man. Y'all better be right careful now, with Bitcoin, man. Listen, y'all, y'all better put that Bitcoin away. I told y'all. I told y'all to leave it alone. Now look at you. Now look at you. You like the guy who had all that game stock. Now he owns like that. He owes like seven hundred thousand dollars in in stock money. Can I ask Charger fans a, a real real question? Just genuine genuine curiosity. When we sit here and we ridicule Dean Spanos and his family. Why do you defend him? I don't understand it. We're not talking about football right now. We're not rooting for them to lose right now. 
there's right. times where we do. I'm talking about right now. We're specifically only talking about the Spanos debt and how terribly ran franchise that they are because of the Spanos family. I feel like the Charger fans agree with what we're saying. You would be better off if Spanos sold the team. You yes. would be better off if you had a just just a crazy example if you have Jeff Bezos as your owner. I don't understand this need to defend Dean Spanos. I don't understand the need to hop on the wagon and just defend everything the guy does. You guys should be on our wagon. You guys should be hitching on with us. You guys should be pushing for him to sell the team because everything that's out right now is just facts. All the numbers, right. we're not making them out of our butt. We're not getting them from our sources. This is in court. This is already public documented information. Your team is in shambles because of the Spanos family and you defend it. I don't understand what the need of Charger fans. Like, I get it. You want to troll us. You want to be against us. Fantastic. Yeah. But I don't get it. Yeah. What I yeah. what I want you right. to know. Uh, the Chicago well said, by the way. Very, very, very well said. Thank All you. you trolls should be on our side. You should be. You should be like, yo, I've told you. I love the team. I love the uniform. I love the bolt, but I hate the owner. And that and and then you should be on our side, which is ridiculing them for not the debt. It's not the debt that I'm ridiculing them for. It's the public nature of the inner familial spat that is what I am ridiculing them for because this is pure public humiliation. Yeah. When your sister is trying to force you to sell the team to pay all the debt so that we can all cash out and you know what? Let's all go live the rest of our lives happily ever after on private jets and private islands. But Dean and anybody else who works inside of there, meaning his kids and his nephews or whatever, nieces, well, what are our kids going to do if we don't own an NFL football team? I don't know. Figure Take it out. their money and go be playboys for the rest of their lives? Look, <laughs> If, if, I if just you had a, think, a visual image of of John and and A. G. Spanos trying to be Playboys. <laughs> That's not going to work with that. <laughs> if if you are thinking that you're going to get a highest bidder situation, and you're thinking Jeff Bezos is going to be the guy, I have some news for people. It has been a, it's a quiet secret now that the Chicago Bears, the McCaskey family, is looking to sell the Chicago Bears. That's that would be the team that jeff bezos would buy before he would buy the chargers so if, how do you know why about Justin which one Fields? how do you know because the, the bears franchise is far more historic and far more important to the nfl than the chargers are regardless of what money what's, that they play what's in. worth more the only the bears i don't know about that i don't know about gotta yeah. check the forbes list well too. i mean i'm sure i'm sure the bears are probably listed higher yeah than than the the chargers but i would also argue that Again, this is what the sister wants. She wants the the franchise to be listed up for sale like a house. Oh, this house is a million dollars? Well, I got 20 offers. Now it's 1.2, 1.4, 1.6. She wants it to be put out there so that everybody who's got who who wants one. And let me tell you something. There are billionaires all around the world that would love to own an NFL football team. True. And so when one becomes available, they all go in on it. They're all looking for it. They're, they're, who's going to be the highest bidder? Steve Ballmer changed the game, as we've talked about many times, when he bought mm -hmm. the Clippers for $2 billion and wasn't going to be outbid. It, was like, it wasn't like, hey, we're only asking like 1.5. He's like, I'll give you two because I don't want any problems. No problems. I think, I think the Chicago problem. Bears would go for far more money than the Chargers would, even in a situation where you're just going to the highest bidder. So what? So what? They, they go, so what? Who cares? I don't care. You got, a, you, you got a house You got a house for sale on this side of the street and a house for sale on this side of the street. I mean, if the Bears are really ultimately for sale, there's plenty of people standing in line who would buy either or. This is true. This so, is true. So for um, those of also, you that, though, that, that, yeah, oh, what? Uh, well, what just, 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 ahead. just, uh, we, listen, I would much rather have the Chargers here, but I think that we got lucky not paying for a charger stadium with this downtown oh, vote man. because have you seen what's happened in las vegas they're dipping into the, yeah. the, the city fund for the Again. second time because there is no hotel tax fee because there was a pandemic for 16 months so if we would have been in the same situation screwing the city over and over oh, yeah. and over oh yeah for sure listen the people made their voice heard they said we're not building a new stadium for a billionaire and we're certainly not doing it for that guy you know who clearly so, doesn't have the money too by the way Right. So so they the, the 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 city made its 
the, the majority of people made their voices heard. Can and, we sit here and argue all day long about what who didn't get a chance to vote? And the Forget all that nonsense. The bottom line is the people who had a chance to vote said, we're not building a stadium for this guy. And look, Browner, you were right. Whoa. According to Forbes. Happens a lot whoa. around here, man. Very rare. According to Forbes. And this is a whole other discussion because you're like, oh, the Chargers increase value by X amount of money. Yeah, but you're still you're right. You did increase, but so did the rest of the NFL because you're still ranked 21st in the NFL, even though you're in LA. Oh, yeah. 2. Number 6, two market. $2.6 billion valuation in 2020. 2021 hasn't come out yet. Um, so you're still 21st. I re- if I remember correctly, I believe they were like 25th when they were in San Diego. Um, Where are the Bears? The Bears are seventh at three point five two five valuation mm. by Forbes. Yeah, yeah, I'm not surprised by that. That's crazy. I mean, you're you're the number one team of Chicago. You're the Bears. You're a historic franchise yeah. versus you're the minor leagues of Los Angeles. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, because you, you also don't you also don't own a stadium. Like you're just a yeah. renter. And somebody asked on Twitter, or somebody asked on a uh, YouTube yesterday, if or maybe it was Bert. I don't remember who, but if. A team, if the Chargers are sold, does that dollar lease go away? And then yeah, are you Bert's now? Okay. And then are you now trying to? Now are you then forced to pay a crap ton more money per year? So that also takes away value from the Chargers. There's not a lot going for them. If, yeah, it's just not. I mean, and, and at the end of the day, I, so everybody's like, "Oh, yeah. you guys are wishing these things about Spanos." Yes, we are. Because at the end of the day, <laughs> guess what? Here's four billion dollars. Go away. Sorry. Yeah. Hey, look, I know I, I thought you brought up the best point I've heard in this whole conversation for all these years. For those of you that continue to defend the Chargers and take your shots at us, why are you not on our side? Why are you on the side of the owner? Why do you feel like you have to defend everything they do just because they're the Chargers? Separate no, the Chargers. and You separate your passion for the team and put your hatred for the owner over here. I'm going to put my hatred over here for the owner, but I can't separate it, so I'm actually rooting against them. Until he's long gone. And even then, I'm not sure because then you might have lost me by then. You'll I mean, come you back. Are, You'll come back. Been five years. Oh, no, I don't think so. Back. Come back. You'll come back. You'll come back. You'll come back. L.A. Brown. You'll come back. When you see, LA, when you see LA Brown. Herbert out there throwing touchdowns to Julio Jones, you'll come nah. back. L.A. Brown. Nah. Nah. I, I'm, not, I'm not down with the Chargers and the Clippers, L.A. Brown. Don't do that to me. No. All right. Speaking of that, let me let me move on and give me one quick second to mention my people at the Total T Clinic, TotalTClinic.com. I'm going to come see you guys. Before the week is over, I'm actually going to make a run because they're both in Sorrento Valley. I'm going to go see the Total T Clinic. I'm getting a T shot over here and I'm getting a B12 shot over here. And then I'm cruising around to the other side and I'm going to go see Ruthie over at Tory Holistics. But I want to just spend a minute here on Total T. Guys, look. Um, if you are feeling in a certain way, like, I don't know what's up with me, man. I'm like, I'm, I just don't feel the way I used to feel, you know, I'm a little tired. I don't feel strong. I don't feel particularly virile. Okay. Something's just not right. And then you go, I don't know what it is. Go have your testosterone levels checked at the total T clinic. It's free. It takes 15 minutes. Okay. And then when you find out if your testosterone is low and then you get on a treatment of testosterone, you're going to go, Oh yeah, this is how I used to feel. And I'm glad I found out about this because, man, I'm feeling strong. Uh, my body is fighting off infection, meaning my immune system is strong. And you know what, dude? I'm bringing it. I'm bringing it. A game. Bringing the heat. That's right. By the way, did you guys see yeah. uh, Paddock hand up to my prediction last night? Two runs, six innings? Well, you know, that's last night's game. By the way, did you see how, uh, how Eric Lauer... Remember, yeah. we always talk about former Padres who come back to haunt the no, Padres. You said that was over. Yeah, I thought so too. I, what was the guy's name? He was the second baseman who wound Jed up going Jerko. to St. Louis. Jed Jergo became like an all star. Adrian Gonzalez. For, right. Everybody who left came back to just wipe out the, the Padres. Eric Lauer hits his first home run of his career. Now, again, this is yesterday's game, um, and they've already played earlier today, but. I mean, Eric Lauer hits this bomb home run off Paddock, and to make it even funnier, really, it wasn't just that he hit the home run. It was the way Tommy Pham and Mateo kind of ran into each other in the outfield, bumbling as the ball was going out. Yeah, that was yeah and then funny. Chris Paddock makes jokes about it after the game, saying, like, yeah, we work out together. He knows how my pitches work and blah, blah, blah. I was like, bro, you're not good enough to be doing that. You, you know, just <laughs> not yet. Okay. You, you get a couple good yeah. stars. Now you turn into a comedian at the post game press conference, huh? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, not yet. Not yet. Okay. 
Yeah. Well, listen, let's let's move on here for a quick second because there's some things happening tonight. Two big things in sports that are going to happen tonight. Um, and if you're a Padres fan, let's start off with this one. The Dodgers and the Giants are going to go toe to toe now for the next four games. So the Dodgers swept the Giants last weekend in San Francisco. Now the Dodgers come home and they've been on a roll. They lost yesterday in Houston, but they've been on a roll. It was nine straight games that they had won. I, I eight or nine. We were we're sort of in the middle there. Maybe they've won eight and a half in a row. So <laughs> <laughs> so the, the Dodgers and the Giants now, and it's so important because the Padres won yesterday and the Dodgers lost yesterday. And if you're like us and Alex, you put the standings up on the screen. We're watching this every day because I describe it like this. Two horses are, well, three are racing and they're going nose to nose the whole race. And I just want to stay a little bit ahead. I, I just want to be in the lead. I want to stay a little bit ahead. And while the Padres have that lead, I just want to stay a little bit ahead. Let's let's take a look at this. It comment. was an eight game win streak, by the way. It counted. Um, so it. that's over. And if you notice on the screen, I have officially eliminated the Rockies and the Diamondbacks on May 27, 2021. Uh, they're not on the screen anymore. So Padres first, um, then the Dodgers and Giants are 30 and 19, and they have a one and a half. They're both one and a half games behind. Okay. At time, so, at time of air. Right. So, <laughs> so here's the thing, right? Good, good point. Cause who knows? I mean, the, the Padres were playing earlier. Um, so look, if you're the Giants, you got to climb back in. If you're the Dodgers, you got to try and kind of leave these guys in the dust because you're watching what's happening with the Padres who are still continuing to win. This is the excitement of this race this year. Yeah. So big story watching these next four games between Dodgers and Giants. But tonight, Lakers and Suns, make a prediction for me right now. Browner, tell me what's going to happen. I think Lakers win pretty handily tonight. I don't know how much Chris Paul we're going to get, but I think the Lakers are going to, with those fans, I think they're going to blow the roof off that joint tonight. I really Oof. do. I really do. I actually forgot and didn't even realize that this is the first time anybody on the Lakers, anybody, will play a playoff game at Staples Center. Yeah. Including LeBron, think about that. Right. LeBron, yeah, right. AD, LeBron. even Kuzma. Everybody on the Lakers is this is their first playoff game at Staples Center because obviously LeBron missed the playoffs his first year, second year it was in the bubble. This is the first time that they will play. That was crazy to me. That I I was going to say it's a close game, but I think that tonight they should win double digits. What's yeah. the number um, allowed in Staples? I, Seventy five hundred. Okay, because I'd seen four thousand was was games past seventy five hundred. If you're um, if you had a ticket to that tonight, this is the game where you you got to go Seattle Seahawk fan. Yeah, you got you got to be standing the whole time so that seventy five hundred sounds and feels like eighteen thousand. The Staples Center should sound like Madison Square Garden tonight. I can't I'm wait expecting to see nothing less. I can't wait to see that guy with the big old hairy chest and the and the Laker chain, and he's just like bring his, his signs out. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Can't wait. All right, listen, stick around, everybody. We got a lot more stuff we still want to get to today. Um, boy, I don't know where we're going to go based on where we've been. Hang around. All right, everybody. It is a Thursday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew, and we welcome you back inside the Seven Mile Casino Studios along with Grande and the Brown Man. We are on the airwaves of 1090. We are on the stream of YouTube, and tonight you'll catch up to us on television on Channel 4 San Diego and Santa Barbara, 118 Orange County and Palos Verdes, although I got to be honest with you right now. I don't think anybody's going to be watching the TV show tonight. I mean, really, right? I mean, the Lakers are going to be playing the Suns. The Dodgers will be playing the Giants. The Padres will have already played, but there's going to be really good live sports on tonight. So listen, if you're flipping channels, come hang out with us. And if you find us and just randomly stop by and go, okay, cool. And DVR us. How about that? Just DVR us. I don't care if you watch, just DVR. How about that? All right, Grande Alejandro. Harrison Fagan is here. He's the executive editor at silverscreenandroll.com. And he's getting ready for tonight's big game between the Lakers and the Suns. He says on Twitter he believes. He calls himself We Believe Fagan now. We believe is we're that the, right? We're the lowly yeah. underdogs, man. 
Yeah, the, it, look, it's the seven seed Lakers. Nobody, uh, like nobody, believed in them. They were, they were, they're just like a, they're just a bunch of scrappy, plucky underdogs without really any All NBA or All Defense candidates or any awards candidates really for anything. And so, you know, they're just greater than the sum of their parts team of just scrappy role players that are trying to upset the big bad number two seed Suns. Wow, wow! And don't Listen forget, that. don't forget the head coach who nobody wanted for a year, who didn't have a job. And the no. exact and the 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 executive who you know traded for Anthony Davis and had LeBron James but didn't really get any executive of the year yep. votes. You know, it's just like it's just a bunch of guys that are just overachieving based on what you would expect from their reputation. Also, Vogel, I think I believe was the third candidate for the job behind Ty Lue and was it Monty Williams? Yeah, well? and, yeah, and yeah, and Monty Williams and even uh, e- even uh, Jawan Howard got an interview over before he did and. Uh, yeah, and then you have like LeBron James literally playing with like I think one leg, one eye, and one arm at this point, and just like you know, proving that you just you just need you just need one of each, you know that you know that that's why the Lord gave us each two so that you can play if you're LeBron with uh, just one working limb of uh, each variety. Oh my goodness, Harrison Fagan. Oh my goodness. From silver screen and roll.com Brown. Are you hearing this? I mean, just these scrappy little underdog Lakers and they're no name. Nobody wanted coach and their superstar. That's only got one of each. Wow. I've never heard Laker fans like that before. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Harrison. What do you think, Brown? Listen, man, that ooh, we all smoking must be real good. Y'all need to pass that around, man. We haven't purple. even got to like the bench player roles yet. Man. You talk that, about that, Drummond, the buyout guy. That purple and gold, that purple and gold magic dragon y'all smoking must really be good, man. Y'all, ooh. You know, one of their best players, Alex Caruso, undrafted. Nobody wow. wanted him, like, yeah. languished around the G League, you know? They just, uh, West just, a, lot of guys, like just a lot of guys team. nobody wanted on this team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Guys looking for respect. Yeah. Okay, okay. A lot of unproven, just unproven underdogs who haven't won anything together yet. Wow. Yeah, I hear wow. that, man. I hear that. Yeah. So what's a the team, cast-offs? What's the cast-offs? A team yeah. that hasn't played a home playoff game in like 10 years, 11 yeah, years? Yeah, they're, they're, they're like the NBA's version of the Suicide Squad, basically, mm-hmm. from like DC Comics. It's just a bunch of people, like a bunch of random characters that are thrown together and uh, trying to get the job done. Wow. Well, oh, here's a great question. Scott, can you name two characters from the Suicide Squad? Nope. Nope. Give me, give me one. I appreciate that you didn't even try. That was, that, that was nope. solid. I couldn't even like, I couldn't even Google it fast enough to come up with be, two characters. I, gotta be honest, I saw that movie and I still can't do it. <laughs> oh, that Joker. movie was great. I love that movie. You're the only yeah, person. Yeah, actually, this might be the first thing we've agreed on on the show. I like that movie. I think it gets <laughs> is it true? Is it true? Is it true? We found common ground. It's yeah, possible. we did it. Look at us. <laughs> Look at us, two guys sitting here. Uh, just bonding talking over suicide, suicide squad. Yeah, bonding <laughs> over Suicide Squad. And of course, it was like most people hate. And it was a universally hated movie, and you two love it. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Wow, just two guys talking ball, talking film, just having a good time, hanging out together. That's a that's a it's a nice relationship. <laughs> <The> scrappy <laughs> Lakers. Yeah, look what they've done. Uh, Harrison Fagan is the executive editor at SilverScreenAndRoll.com. This is the SB Nation website that really focuses in on all things Lakers. Harrison, you're coming in uh, in the middle of a conversation that we were having in the last segment. Here's what we were talking about. So the Laker fans tonight, 7,500 people will get into Staples Center. If you watch what's going on in Madison Square Garden, these people are celebrating like they haven't seen a playoff game in 13 years in their building, right? Uh, which they hadn't. <laughs> in Phoenix, those people are, uh, you know, capacity celebrating like they haven't seen a playoff game in 15 years, but they, which they haven't. The Laker fans tonight haven't seen a playoff game in a long time. And the Laker players, we were just talking about this. Nobody has ever played a playoff game at Staples. So if I'm the Laker fans tonight, I'm trying to make 7,500 feel like 18,000 because that's what I'm seeing elsewhere. What do you think? Now, hold on. I got to correct you there. Jared okay, Dudley has played a playoff game at Staples. He just played on the Suns, but, uh, <laughs> you know, just not yeah. for the Lakers. Oh, okay. There you go. Very good. <laughs> Did he Very play? Good. He did play. He did play. Oh, he, got, on, he, got, he got lit up by Kobe. Come on, come on, yeah, man. like listen, he was listen. he was out there. He was out there getting scored on. You know, he was he was doing his best. He, he, he may re- he may refuse to come on this show, but I, I won't let no slander happen like that. Don't How do is that, that slander? Shit. That's a genuine question. I listen. No, I know he, he did his best. I, I remember in that series being like, "Hey, this guy can actually play." Like he he made Kobe work for those baskets he was scoring on him. 
you know? And uh, yeah, now full circle. He's on the, he's uh, playing for the big, bad evil empire of scrappy underdogs uh, against the number two seed sons. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited for fans to be back in the building. Like I, you know, I think that we've reached the point in LA where cases are down. And like, I think the Lakers are really excited to have home fans. You've seen LeBron all year, whenever he, you know, there's like a crowd shot that goes viral. He's like, can't wait for this in Staples basically uh, in his tweets. And, you know, I think, look, this team won the title last year. They didn't get to play in front of fans other than you know like zoom fans like uh, like people in zoom meetings like this on a video board uh so like i think they're all excited to get to play in front of a crowd this is the biggest crowd that they've had since they welcome fans back to the building i believe it's like more than double what they had had previously so you know it's probably i mean they just experienced a 90 percent capacity crowd in phoenix so maybe that'll kind of dull it a little bit for but for them this is going to feel like a game a sell out game seven whatever compared to what they've had i hope I hope it does. And I, and I know that for me, I don't know about you guys, Alex and John, um, when I watch Madison Square Garden and game, you know, this Knicks game last night, when I watch what the Lakers were facing in Phoenix, like as a viewer, I feel it. Versus, by the way, if I were watching Dallas and the Clippers in Staples Center, all those little cardboard cutouts, they don't create a feeling, a vibe, even just as a viewer. So I'm hoping that tonight, the Staples Center crowd, half capacity, even probably less. Um, I hope that they they bring it and, and make us, the viewers, feel it because that's what it's been like in Madison Square Garden. That's what it's been like in Phoenix. I mean, it can't feel worse than whatever home court disadvantage the Clippers just had. So, like, I, I mean, it's, you know, it's going to be louder than that at the very least. <laughs> well, I want to yeah. thank you, Harrison. This morning you tweeted uh, something about Paul George and how his contract kicks in next season for like $175 million. And on that same tweet, it was also what they gave up for Paul George. It just brought some joy to my morning. So thank you for that. Can you take yeah, it? Is, that? Uh, it's, it, it's an amusing trade package that they gave up for him in retrospect, especially if the Clippers don't turn this around. Like right. that's it, there, there's going to be, you know, I know, I know you brought me on to talk Lakers, but like, that's going to be a whole other thing. This off season. Like if they lose in the first round, Wait, what I, I don't was even in the know package? what they're going to do. Was here's the, the whole, here's the whole Paul George trade. Uh, shy, Gilgis Alexander, Shay, Shay, whatever I said, Danilo okay. Gallinari, uh, anyway, 2020, next. 2022, 2024, 2026, and tw- and 2021 first round picks. The 2021 was from Miami. Uh, Miami 2023 first round pick, lottery protected. The Clippers 2023 first round pick, right to swap picks. The Lake, the Clippers 2025 first round pick, right to swap picks. And he has a four-year, one hundred seventy-six million dollars extension that kicks in next season. What? what why would you have? What, I'm okay. Listen, hold on. Time out, Harrison. Come on, bro. Have you seen, with the exception of Jason Tatum, who is a legit NBA superstar, what has Danny Ainge done with the almost the exact same amount of picks? Like NBA picks aren't NFL picks. You can find a great player in the fifth round in a trade for a, a, a NFL draft pick the nba is not the same after the first five guys you got to get damn lucky to find a guy after that that's actually any good for a long period of time no i mean if you want to bring me on here to slander the celtics i'm happy to do that you know like it's uh we can do that together yeah no we gotta like we gotta start the dialogue did the nets or did the celtics lose the kg paul pierce trade like yes, look, look, by the far. Nets yes. are about to eliminate them from the playoffs they you know danny ainge everybody you know said that he got a heist everybody said that you know he like greatest trade package of all time they fleece the nets you know it's like I mean, maybe, but it doesn't seem to have worked out, uh, you know, in having a better basketball team, which, you know, I was told is what is supposed to actually matter. Will anyone from that trade be better than Paul George? Because I like Shea Gildress. He ain't going to be better than Paul George. Nobody you draft in a 20. I mean, he might be better than Paul George has been for the Clippers at some point. <laughs> but Paul George has been good except for the playoffs. He's yeah. been dog so in the playoffs. Uh, other, yeah, other than the games that are really, really important, yeah. uh, he's been good. Right. Man, you got to get there. You got to you got to get there to be bad. So, like, Harrison, they ain't been there. Harrison, you don't listen to this man because this, this guy this guy puts on a Nets hat. He puts on a Warriors hat. He puts on a Clippers hat. Anything Come to disparage the Lakers. He's yesterday just like he your was like resident Lakers hater. He's, right, and he, he's the Skip Bayless of this show. And yesterday I even mentioned the fact that could why it could opt out next year, and he flipped like his Go head where? exploded. Go where? Miami. Who cares where he goes? Stop it. Stop it. Go. Man, Lakers. No. He He's can't go nowhere. He can't go nowhere. <laughs> Here's why. If he loses in the first round, 
after choking in the bubble, then you choke in the first round. You're supposed to be the guy. Now you just gonna walk and go somewhere else? No, no. He should leave because he's a bad GM for handpicking Paul George to come with him. That's a different argument. <laughs> I mean, to be fair to to be fair to Kawhi's GM skills, you know, you got to have backup plans. And Paul George was like his like fourth or fifth contingency plan based on the reports of guys that we heard him trying to get to join him on the Clippers. Like, you know, I don't think that uh, I, I don't think Paul George was like his number one option. It was just like the Clippers were like, hey, you know, if we give up all this, we get both of them. And, you know, in terms of look, we can all make fun of them. Like on paper, that looked like it made sense. Right. I think that we're just learning that intangibly – like work. there is something missing from this mixture and this group in, in terms of like, you know, getting them to play off success. And wow. clearly the only problem was not Doc Rivers and Montrez Harrell as much as they were kind of the scapegoats. Or Lou on the way out Shocker. Door. Yeah. Well, let me tell you what the problem with that the Clippers have. And, and this is obvious for anybody to see. And Browner, you're giggling, but here goes because this is the answer. You want to know what it me, is? LA cap. Here it is. Okay. No, no, this is, this is LA Brown because you're a Clipper <laughs> fan. Okay. So I'm going to have to just spell it out for you, dog. They ain't got no leadership, man. When you see LeBron telling KCP, yo dog, I passed you that ball. You held it. Like I could shoot, but I'm not shooting well. So you know what? I don't want it here. You take it. When LeBron goes up to KCP and he goes, dude, Take the shot, man. We trust you. We believe in you. You know, that you're on the floor for a reason. You're rocking the uni. Shoot the ball. That's leadership, okay? Whereas Kawhi Leonard, great player, okay, doesn't have, a, doesn't have leadership, vocal leadership in particular, in his DNA. He's not, he's not what LeBron is. He's a really great player. He is not the personality, and he is not the leader, and that is the missing ingredient that they have. And I think they're going to wind up getting beat by Dallas. I mean, everybody talks about them coming back. I don't see it, Harrison. I, you know, look, the post game quotes were hilarious from the other night of like Ty Lu basically saying, you know, like, well, they beat us two times on our home floor, but let's see them do that again at home. It's like, <laughs> wait, no, that's not, oh, God. that's not how that, I know you guys have a home court disadvantage, but around the league, that is not normally how things work. And uh, yeah, I don't, Paul George saying like, we're not panicking. Like on one hand, like, I mean, you shouldn't be panicking. You can't panic because you're going to lose if you start panicking. But like, you know, maybe maybe talk about how you threw some things in the locker room or like someone was upset or, you know, like somebody should be mad right now. You guys should be fired up. Not like, hey, no, we're, we're chill. It's fine. Yeah. No big deal. Yeah. We're talking to Harrison Fagan. He's executive editor of SilverScreenAndRoll.com. It's an SB Nation site, and it's all about the Lakers. And, dude, these guys do some massive traffic. I mean, when you talk about where do Laker fans and probably even Laker haters for that matter, where do they go to get their info? They go to this website, silverscreenandroll.com. It's also where Alex has his podcast, Talk O Tuesday, and it comes out every Tuesday. And this past week, it was awesome because it came out after the Lakers had beaten the Suns to even the series at one apiece. So like after the game and after you've watched Chuck and Shaq and everybody else break it all down, I was able to go in and take a listen to Alex and Alex, his partner, uh, their, their, uh, their podcast. So it's awesome. Um, all right, Harrison, give me one quick second to just remind all of our listeners about Corky's Pest Control, 1-800-901-1102. I just want to say to everybody that's listening on radio, you've been hearing me talk about Corky for 20 years. For those of you that catch up to us on TV or on YouTube or any of the audio podcast platforms, you know the story. Um, anywhere in Southern California other than Orange County. I don't know what your problem is, OC. I don't know what happened. Okay. San Diego, LA, Riverside County, court can come get to you and nobody takes care of pests better. I'm telling you, like when it comes to termites, dude, uh, four-year guarantee, like those things are not coming back and go ask around or go shop around because nobody has that four-year guarantee. Uh, rats, mice, gophers. Harrison, do you have any gopher issues at your house? No, we do not. Thankfully, our apartment complex has not been infested with gophers. That would That's, be like, I would not be here if that was going on. Yes, you know, I would, uh, I would be fighting off the gopher army. Because you don't understand, dude. What happens is gophers will find all of your plants and all the nice stuff you've put in your garden. And then the gopher goes underneath, just like in Caddyshack. And then he takes that stuff, just takes it from you. Right. That's why Corky comes out and takes care of gophers too. call 1-800-901-1102. Corky's.
Thank you. That's that's a jingle, Harrison. Next yeah. time you should say cork. That was enthusiastic. Yeah. I, I, you brought it home. I really appreciate yeah. it. Cork. That was nice. Browner didn't participate. I don't know if he thought like, you know, in front of you, it was going to be embarrassing, but every other day he's really into it. Yeah. Yesterday, he even like gave First off of a nice all, melody at the end. He listen, was like, Corky. Yeah. Yeah, listen, First of last, all, what? I, I put that Al Green on it yesterday. Yeah. I felt like that was good. That was a two for one coupon I put on that thing. <laughs> uh, Harrison, make a prediction. So, so how do you think things go tonight as the Lakers have tied this series at one apiece? I'm pretty confident the Lakers are going to win this game because they, you know, Chris Paul looked like a shell of himself in that last one. I picked Lakers in five with a healthy Chris Paul. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. I felt a little worried about that prediction after game one. Um, but even he, midway through game two. Midway. No, yeah, how about, I was how about feeling pretty good quarter. until the fourth quarter of game fourth two quarter. when they yeah. started to let that lead slip. And then I was like, oh no, like if they lose to the Suns bench guys and like DeAndre Ayton, basically, this is not going to be good. Um, and so, you know, they, they held on for that one. I think that campaign, like, you know, now that they've had a full, uh, you know, uh, tape of game, like a full game of tape to look at in turn uh, to, at, what the threat the campaign is bringing and what he's doing well and all of that stuff. Like the Lakers are going to have a better plan on him. I don't think that I'm sure they scouted him, but I'm sure he was also not at the top of the scouting report coming into this series. He may not have been on the first page. He's going to be coming into this game. They're going to make his life a nightmare. I'm pretty convinced. And I think that now that they can see that Chris Paul is limited, they're going to have some different strategies on him tonight. And in terms of taking advantage of that, obviously you never root for injury. The Lakers were not like hoping he got, hurt or something like that but you know they wouldn't be doing their jobs if they didn't try to take advantage of it and capitalize on it now so i, I do think that we're going to see an even better lakers team tonight i'm pretty how about sure. another prediction deandre Ayan, how many dunks tonight <laughs> uh i'm not i'm not super confident that they're gonna stop him from dunking entirely i i'd say like i'd say three or four probably will because, he be you know, shooting above 90 percent again from the field no, I don't. Yes. I think that the, we're going to start to see those rotations start to get cleaned up a little bit. Although again, last game, like they were better than game one, obviously, but they weren't perfect. And I don't know that we're going to see perfect tonight, but I think that they will start to figure some stuff out in terms of, you know, just checking him and getting him uh, at least making him take slightly more difficult shots, which is again, yeah. an extremely low bar for what they've given up to him. <laughs> his his, his, his recipe, two shots were block shots. He didn't his, miss them. They were blocked. His recipe for a high percentage is basically driven through the offense. Like he's not getting it. Like AD's getting his points. Yeah. He's getting his, points because guys are helping off on defense and the link is breaking down and even if you have Schroeder rotating to Aiden he's still gonna dunk the ball yeah. KCP Kuzma it doesn't matter if it's not LeBron or AD or Drummond he's gonna dunk that ball so I, I think he's gonna continue to get his points but his points again they're not they're not hurting you Devin Booker's points will hurt you because they lead to other guys getting wide open threes Aiden is just a function of their offense so I, I, his points are really inconsequential to me. Final thought to Harrison Fagan. What do you say, Harrison, on the way out? Yeah, I, I think the Lakers are going to win tonight. I'm, I'm fairly confident. I think they're going to get a lot of energy from that many fans being back in the building. I think that, you know, they, over the last several years, have not shot well in Staples Center. But, uh, like, they're I, – I just don't see how you couldn't get amped up for coming back for this game. I think that they probably feel like they have a real advantage in this series. And as long as AD and LeBron are ready to go, I'm pretty confident that this is going to actually be like – they're going to win handily tonight. It's going yeah. down as a KCP game. Yeah, I mean, look, he's due. He's due at this point after the last two games. You'll get a TMC <laughs> game before you get a KCP game. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I've been I've been wanting more THT the whole time. Seven minutes in game one, six minutes in game two. I'm like, yo, this guy was like a huge contributor down the stretch. Like, give this guy, you know, give him his playing time. Seriously. Yeah, he he's just a little loose with the ball in terms of turning it over, and the Suns <laughs> yeah. are really targeting him defensively. And so I I do not imagine that we're going to get a ton more THT tonight. I think he, he's going to get his chance to see if they can, you know, get him scoring or whatever. But if it's a bad THT night, they're going to have a quick hook. You even saw the other night when they can't, went to sub, I believe it was, uh, it was LeBron was coming back. I forget who was coming back in, but THT, after the horrible turnover he had on the behind the back pass to AD mm -hmm. out of the pick mm -hmm. and roll. Mm -hmm. Like he immediately started running to the bench for, uh, it was actually Alex Caruso, but then Frank Vogel was like, no, 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 Dennis is coming out. And so, you know, I think THT knows that there's a quick hook on him. <laughs> 
Hey, Harrison, great stuff, man. Thank you. The website is on fire. The content is incredible. Silverscreenandroll.com is the website. Harrison Fagan is the editor. And uh, he is now known on Twitter as We Believe Fagan because of his scrappy little Lakers. <laughs> Harrison, we'll talk to you soon, man. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, guys. Always appreciate the invite. Great friends, what is happening now on a Thursday afternoon? We're pulling into Thursday evening now, and we are back in the Seven Mile Casino studios here of Kaplan and Crew, along with Grande and the Brown Man. We, uh, if you're just kind of getting with us, we've been a little all over the place today. What's new, right? We uh, have talked about the Padres, who played earlier in the day, the Dodgers, who lost in, in Houston, but now starts a series against San Francisco. So San Francisco and L.A. going toe-to-toe as the Padres now are on their way to Houston. And so we got to keep our eye on that matchup just because of the second place team and the third place team doing a little bit of battle. And given that the Dodgers had won three straight against the giants last weekend in San Francisco. So we were talking about that. Talked a lot about the Lakers and the Suns and, uh, and the NBA. And we even threw in some Clippers and Mavericks. We kind of got deeper into that kind of stuff. Got a little basketball -y on you, you know, and um, a lot earlier today about um, how fans are behaving at ball games, whether they're throwing popcorn or spitting players, or beating the ever living hell out of each other in the stands. Uh, we were we were into that stuff too. So I mean, have I reviewed the show well? I mean, I mean, do you think I've kind of gotten that was good cliff been? notes? Yeah, good yeah. cliff notes. Hey, hey, I haven't asked you, Alex, but I see behind you on your Callaway golf bag. Mm -hmm. I see your uh, your swag chain T shirt. Yeah, I'm trying to find a place to permanently have it so we could always be seen. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a little browner for me. It's like kind of just hanging there, but I think it's going to stay. Yeah. I, stay. um, I got to get a swag chain t-shirt. That is so swaggy. Drippy. Oh, I was trying to think of something outside of swaggy swag. I don't know who, I don't know who Browner made the face for swaggy or drippy. Yeah. yeah I, drippy. I, I think he drippy. What did you drippy? No, you don't, you don't think that no. shirt is drip. That shirt don't drip. Oh, is that no. shirt dope? Mm. Even, sure I, dope AF? even I got to put a yellow card out right now, man. Really? For drippy? For drip? For that shirt don't drip? Yeah, we got to. Mm. You know, I, I think I, I had a buddy of mine tell me a long time ago, and I think I really should do it. I think I got to get a yellow card and a red card. Mm -hmm. And if, if if I red card you, you got to sit out the rest of the segment. But Oh, my. Yeah. Oh, my. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Red card? I, red card and you're out. Red card. I actually really like the idea of red card, yellow card. I'll like red card myself. You guys can red card me too. <laughs> we should all have them. Yeah. Red cards and yellow cards. Yeah, won't be no show. <laughs> yeah, well, Browner will never be on. Right. Right. Browner gets red carded daily. You know? Listen, you might as well start paying me for one of them ghost positions. I'll never be on the show. <laughs> right, we, who's the friend? Who's the friend that came up with the red card, yellow card concept? Well, this is something that my friend, actually, my friend Oscar, you guys have met, implemented this a long time ago. He started walking around <laughs> with a yellow and a red car in his wallet. And our whole friend group is, we just give each other, like, it was basically me and Scott versus Browner. That's what we do. To, like, that's how we hang out. And if you told a joke and it was a bad joke, he would yellow card you. And if you really, met, if you really swung and miss, you get a red card and you're out. You got to go home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta go home. <laughs> How many red cards has he given out? I don't think <laughs> I've seen many. I don't think I've seen many. I, I don't even remember seeing one, but I saw a few yellow cards. Saw a few yellow. I got a good video. It's actually at Comic Con. He yellow carded my buddy at a. We were at a at a bar playing pool, and he yellow carded him. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I yeah. think that's great, and we should definitely take Oscar's <laughs> idea and institute it on the show. I'm gonna get a video. That's just what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get a video, and I'll just mm -hmm. play the video when you get yellow carded. Mm -hmm. And then I'll play the video when you get red carded. All right. I'm going to do that tomorrow. Okay. Very good. There'd Maybe you don't have to yellow sit the today. whole segment, but at least like two minutes in the box, you know? Right. You got to go into the penalty box. You got to hit, you got to hit the mute on your mic for two That's minutes. That's doable. Yeah. 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 You got to mute your mic. That's doable. Yeah. And, and yeah. there could be a major penalty though for five minutes. I oh, like that. Okay. I agree. A five minute major for fighting. 
Yeah, it's a good idea. Hey, um, before we keep going here, and I, I actually I got to switch gears a little bit. We've talked a lot of baseball, a lot of basketball, and uh, and you know a lot of fan related stuff. We talked a lot about that, you know, fights and stands and fights on planes and stewardesses getting their teeth punched out. Um, but I do want to talk about some football stuff in just a second. Before I do, I got to say um, to all the great friends out there, if you are contemplating buying a house right now. This is a complicated time in real estate. I'm no expert, but I'm following the market. And and what I've got is I've got an expert. I've got Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services. And I thought Gary made a really interesting point the other day. He's like, look, I'm going to get you pre-qualified for your loan. You know, And if you're pre-qualified to buy a $700,000 house, guess what? We're going looking for a $600,000 house because the prices are so inflated right now because the, the, the availability um, is just not there. The, the numbers of homes for sale versus the numbers of homes, uh, for people who are trying to buy them, the supply and the demand, the supply is not there. The demand is. So look, um, if you are trying to buy a house, if you are trying to get pre-qualified for a loan, so you know how much you've got to spend on a house. If you haven't refinanced yet, for some reason, been too damn busy keeping your business afloat. You never even refinanced. All of these transactions, Gary Cooper can help you. 858-376-1299, 858-376-1299. And as I'm saying all of this on screen, I can see Alex has a grin on his face. I'm dying to know what is going on with that <laughs> grin that you're looking at. It's right. either that you're looking for yellow cards and red cards, or you are you got a smile like you finally got all your stuff done with Gary Oh, Cooper. yeah. Oh, my God. I, I think I'm officially done with, with, with my, my stuff. It's all on the approval process now, but I am laughing because I... I remembered the video when I said I want to get a video. I remembered which one I wanted, and I'm watching the video. <laughs> and it's just like the best. This is like the most flamboyant ref of all time. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this ref in action. Um, he's just incredibly flamboyant, and the way he gives yellow cards is my favorite. Uh, <laughs> he's just like the best. I don't even know. I don't think I've ever seen him ref a game. I don't even know where he refs games. Looks like somewhere in South America, but the way he hands yellow cards is just the best. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. We're watching these videos. For those of you that are listening on radio, we are watching these videos and this referee, you know, you have these NFL referees who are on the screen all the time because they're constantly calling holding calls on every single play so that they can be on TV and they all got their own personality and style. You called him the most flamboyant ref. This is hilarious. Yeah. So I'm going to clip this of him handing out yellow and red cards. I don't know. You guys have seen the few that he's done right there. That little oh throwback of the head all the way back. Yeah. Oh, he's hilarious. He's like a right Broadway right performer. Uh. <laughs> yeah. He, he, he's a he's a Broadway performer. He's 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 going to win a Tony Award for officiating. I love the way he points oh, at corners. Look at that. Boom. This yellow guy. cards. Yeah, it cracks me up. Dude, I went to a, a high school soccer game on Tuesday night. Torrey Pines was playing Cathedral in the semifinals, I think, uh, to go to the, the CIF championship. And I think it's now La Costa Canyon against Torrey Pines. And, dude, I haven't been to a, a girls' soccer game in a year, right? Because my daughter graduated high school, and then she went off to college where she was going to continue playing, and then COVID hit, and then there was no playing. And then she didn't like where she was, so she came home. Dude, I went to a soccer game the other day to sit with some friends whose kids were playing, and I immediately, with no child on the field, and really with no rooting interest, I didn't care who won, you know? I mean, I actually was pulling for my friend's kid, and they play for Cathedral, and I am a Torrey Pines dad. Dude, I immediately jumped right back in as if my kid was on the field. Let's go! You know, I started screaming stuff. You know, pass the ball! You know, stop them! <laughs> Second nature, man. Come I don't natural. even know what happened. I don't know what happened to me. Like, you I had into, no kid on the field. You turned into all those Italians in Sopranos season one. Where all those dudes, all those mobsters are just sitting on the sidelines, just yelling at the ref, intimidating yeah. the ref, man. Yeah. yeah. Hilarious. Oh, oh man. Sopranos, goodness. by the way. Yeah. You almost done? It's almost done. Almost there. Almost there. I just, uh, where am I? At? I just finished. Christopher mm -hmm. went to Hollywood and met with mm -hmm. Ben Kingsley. Mm -hmm. I just finished that portion. We just came back with the, uh, and I know, listen, did I tell you what happened? And I, I don't remember. I, I don't remember. Listen, I gotta be honest with you. I saw every Sopranos episode. I watched it while it was happening years ago. 
I don't know anything about what you're talking. I don't remember it. Okay, cool. So that's where I'm at. Season six, episode seven, eight, or nine, final season. And there's like 21 episodes, final season. It's a great mm-hmm. freaking show, man. It is great such show. a good show. Great Gandolfini show. is yeah. is just amazing. Um, his wife he, Carmela. Is, did he di- did he die, James Gandolfini? In, in real, real life, life? yeah. In yes. real life, in real life, yeah. Because he was also in another movie years ago. Um, that was a very scary movie called Eight Millimeter. Have you ever seen that movie with Nicolas Cage? I don't know that Nicolas Cage is in it. I don't know. It, He's it's an about eight millimeter. Eight millimeter. You may get the name wrong. Maybe, maybe. I thought James Gandolfini. You might be right. I don't think Gandolfini is like the star. I think Gandolfini is like the supporting actor who, you know, he's kind of the psycho who I, like typical, like Sarah lives in mom's basement and is like kidnapped. Yeah, that's eight roast. millimeter. Yeah. He was definitely definitely eight mask. millimeter and Nicolas Cage is on the poster. Mm-hmm. Oh, Nin- yeah. 1999. Yeah. I just remember Gandolfini scaring the hell out of me. In Who's the better actor, that. James Gandolfini or Philip Seymour Hoffman? I'd say Philip Seymour Hoffman is, is better because um, he's still going. He's had a lot of dead I mean, too. Philip Seymour Hoffman's dead. Dead well. too. Oh, my bad. God, really? When did he die? When did Philip Seymour Hoffman? A while ago. Die? Really? Same year, I feel like. Oh my God, that's so sad. I didn't yeah, know. Gandolfini passed in 2013. Uh huh. And Seymour Hoffman died in 2014. Oh, how horrible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't uh, even know. I don't remember seeing Gandolfini in, in much except Sopranos. Like yeah, I didn't watch that's... many of his. I think I saw him in a movie called The Mexican, which is boring as hell. What's wait, wait, what's it called? What was the Mexican? name of that movie? Yeah, it was that Who's Brad that? Pitt. Brad Pitt and Julia Roberts. Yeah. yeah. That, that was, was a bad a, movie. That was a boring movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember seeing Gandolfini in anything else, really. G- Gandolfini, what a what an acting job playing Tony Soprano. Did you see any of uh did you see our boy Tony Saragusa in any of the the episodes? He was in a bunch of them. Was he? Yeah, he's a big mobster. You know, he's like one of the hitmen kind of guys that works for them. He's in it because he talked about it. Yeah, drove Tony around, drove Tony Soprano around in oh, a black like SUV. Must not be there yet, then. Must be in this final. No, season. no, no. It was, it was, it's already happened. I think. Well, oh, maybe there. You said there's 21 episodes in the final yeah. season. Um, because what, what? Oh, uh, you know the name of the character, Big Pussy, right? Yeah, that like was that's that, his. That was like season one and two. Yeah. So, so he, I think, I think Siragusa kind of takes on the role of driving Tony around. You know. Okay. Got it. My favorite character, though, I mean, I love the name. Silvio Dante is one of my favorites. And Paulie Walnuts. Dude, I had a realization recently because yeah. I was told that Silvio is the guy from the from the uh, Bruce Springsteen band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, his name is uh, Stevie. Never put it together. Yeah, really? Stevie Wonder? Yeah. No, no, not Stevie Wonder. Stevie oh. Van Zant yeah. is his name. Yeah. Yeah. He's the, yeah, he plays for Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. Yeah, but he's from Jersey. Yeah. yeah, it was great. Uh, my favorite still, Paulie. Paulie, awesome. you, you, you like Paulie's the hair? Awesome. I love the hair. I love how mm-hmm. sensitive he is. Mm-hmm. Love it. I love this storyline with his storyline with his mom. At, 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 at. Let me yeah. at. Yeah. Let me have a little uh, buffalo mozzarella. At. I yeah. love. I love Paulie Walnuts. Yeah, it's a great show, yeah. man. A hey, ma. <laughs> <laughs> Did you only watch it once? Yeah, I've only seen it. Well, I mean, yeah. I watch it from beginning to end. Is it I like never... Breaking Bad? Because I like Breaking Bad to me. Like once you know what happens, it's not mm-hmm. really a great rewatchable show. No, I I don't remember what happened in in Sopranos. In fact, you telling me these things makes me think that I should go back and watch it, but I won't. Yeah, well, because you can't, can't get, get your my, smart TV to work. Can't get my Spectrum app to work on my TV. Yeah. It's on HBO anybody, Max. Can you get that? Any, any, yeah, probably. Anybody have any advice for me? Does anybody have any advice that you could tweet me, Facebook me? Instagram me, cited me, any way to communicate with me. Does anybody have any advice? My my Spectrum app on my smart TV is not working, and therefore I can't watch the cable offerings on my smart TV. And, and I don't want to go to another. I mean, I don't. I'm trying to think of where else I can get what I want. I mean, maybe YouTube TV. I don't know. I just want my Spectrum app to work. Is that too much to ask? No, listen, dude, if you go to YouTube TV, there's a lot of stuff that you think you're going to have available. You're not because of Valley Sports. Yeah, no, it's not that. But I mean, I only need CNBC. I need ESPN. I need news channels. I kind of want you know? to like flip your camera to the TV and let's just figure it out right now. That's how yeah. I'm just curious. But let's it's not. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. uh, where were we? We were talking about we weren't something, anywhere. Weren't we? Oh, we weren't. OK, Here's what I want to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, I want to mention this. Um I, w- I want to mention that uh, I'm I'm following the Jacksonville Jaguars right now. 
Why? I'm interested. I'm, I'm curious. I'm, I am curious. I'm interested. I don't really like Urban Meyer. I don't know what it is about him, but he's just, I don't like him. You got a lot of Nick Saban in him. I don't, it, um, I, listen, I don't mean like I personally hate the guy. I hate him. It's not what I mean. I just mean like as a coach and as a sports fan and as an observer, I look at Urban Meyer and I don't like him. And I like Trevor Lawrence. I, I do like Trevor Lawrence. I liked him as a player at Clemson. I like the kid. I like Trevor Lawrence. Then there's Tim Tebow. I've always kind of liked Tim Tebow. I'm not a Tim Tebow hater. I'm not like a Tim Tebow follower. But I remember when Tim Tebow was playing for the Broncos and he was at his height, dude. I was such a Tebow fan. I was contemplating becoming a Christian brother. You know? Wow. I, I even wanted to get a, a jersey that on the back said Tebow Wits. Because I, I was that big that of a actually. fan. Tebow Wits. I was, I was that big of a fan of Tebow, but I wasn't going to become a Christian brother. I was going to be a Tebow fan as a Hebrew brother, Tebow Wits. So I like Tebow. I, I'm very curious to see if Tim Tebow can do what he's trying to do now. I like Trevor Lawrence, who I loved at Clemson. I think he's a really good player. And I don't like the coach. But what's interesting to me is, is that Tebow's there because you got to figure that Urban Meyer thought, even if Tebow isn't a star for us, which what's the, you know, the chances are slim. If he's in the locker room, this is, this is Urban Meyer's thought. If Tim Tebow's in this locker room, he will have a, a positive impact on this team. And that's what he thinks. And when they asked Trevor Lawrence about Tim Tebow, you put this up on the screen, Alex. They 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 asked Tim. They asked Trevor Lawrence about Tebow. Go ahead and read that if you don't mind. Um, I think he just. I think just what he brings to the team. That's just a guy you want to be around. Great character, super hard worker. Just does things the right way. Those are the first initial impressions for me. Yeah. So so look, Trevor Lawrence. You you looking for somebody to take Trevor Lawrence, who's a young guy? Isn't he already married? Yes. So he's like 21 years old. I think married to high school. Mm -hmm. Oh, easily. Allegedly. So? You know, Tim Tebow do the back well, door. Is Tim he Tebow married now too? Tim, Tim Tebow, Tebow married. Isn't Tim Tebow married now? I thought he's married. He had, he had the sex already. The sex? I told y'all yeah, he was I mean, already having Tebow, the sex, man. Oh yeah. Tebow got married in 2020. So they, they might be, Tebow might be ahead now. Mm -hmm. I doubt it. Well, anyway, Tebow is considered by Urban Meyer to be hyper competitive, ultra Christian, and super positive. And you know what? With a character like that in our locker room, he will rub off on guys. And you know what? Trevor Lawrence is the number one overall pick, and he's going to be a projected superstar but he's a young guy and he's already married and he's grounded and he's probably got some faith in him, you know, and you put Tim Tebow to, to mentor, not as a quarterback, just as a guy, just as a superstar caliber guy, even though he's just a quarterback in Jacksonville, you have Tim Tebow mentor this guy. This is what urban Meyer is thinking is going to happen is hoping is going to happen. And it looks like Trevor Lawrence has already taken the bait. Look, man, I'm going to tell you all this right now. Trevor Lawrence already on the all-Jesus team, okay? He don't need Tim Tebow for that. Y'all better be careful because if Trevor Lawrence throw five incompletions and two interceptions, the crowd going to be cheering for Tebow <laughs> to play quarterback. <laughs> people, in, people in professional environments of competition do not listen to a person who does not add to the winning on the field. He can be the best clapper in the world. If he can't help you score on the field, all that ain't going to matter, man. So that sounds like a good idea for Urban Meyer. But in, unless Tim Tebow actually contributes, his help in the locker room will fall on deaf ears because dudes don't want to hear that at all. Zero. Dudes didn't want to hear that from him when he was winning. Mm. So I don't know. I don't know I why. I think, just think the, Tebow, the Tebow thing is I'm already over it. <laughs> I'm already over it. <laughs> hey, buckle dude. up. First of, all, first, of all, first of all, first of all, don't make me pay attention to the Jaguars. Don't make me do that. Yes, that's true. 
Secondly, Urban Meyer, I'm with you, Scott. Never liked the guy. Ever. Don't know. Don't I do know why. He just has like this pompous face. He has a very punchable mm-hmm. face. I wish the Dodger <laughs> fan would find him. <laughs> Secondly, or thirdly, wherever I'm at at this point, the only reason Trevor Lawrence saying that stuff is because he knows Tebow is not going to take his job. There's no chance Tebow. He, this isn't a Jordan Love Aaron Rodgers situation. This is Tim Tebow is never going to throw a pass ever for okay, the Jaguars. No, okay, I oh, okay. guarantee that. Okay. I will. Oh, yeah. no. Oh. no, no, that is no, false, no. my friend. No guarantee way, man. That. I, no, that no. Here's what's going to happen. Barkley button. Yeah. Where is it, dude? Here's what's going to happen. Just be prepared. Here's yeah. what happens. You ready? Here's watch this. Tebow and Trevor Lawrence line up in the backfield on the goal line. Tebow is an athlete. Lawrence is an athlete. Who's going to get the ball? Who's going to run it in? Okay. So now the ball gets snapped. Yeah. He hands the ball to Tebow or the ball goes directly to Tebow. Tebow's not Tebow, going to the team. Wait. Tebow takes the ball, <laughs> runs towards the line of scrimmage, stops, jumps, and throws the ball into the end zone. Are you there talking about be... what's going to happen? Or are you talking about a highlight you saw in 2002? Right. That I'm talking about a highlight I saw in 2002 <laughs> that I'm going to say is going to reappear in 2021. They might do that, and they'll go 1-16. in 16. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. Um, all right, make a prediction right now. Is Tim Tebow on the Jacksonville Jaguars this year? Yes or no? Yes. No. Yes. Browner and I are on the same page here. Wow. We are in the Seven Mile Casino Studio. Tebow makes miracles happen. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody stick around. The highlight of the day presented by Tori Holistics is coming up next. All right, everybody. Hey, it is Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man here on a Thursday. And uh, we're heading towards 7 o'clock on the radio. Okay, but I am looking forward to tonight sitting down and watching this Laker game. Okay, and and watching to see are the Lakers going to take control of the series against the Suns? I'll probably keep my eye on the Dodgers and the Giants because the Padres played earlier in the day, and I want to see if the Giants. Yo, I think we should be rooting for the San Francisco Giants right now. Seriously, like I, the Dodgers swept them in San Francisco. The Giants come to LA. I think we should be cheering for the Both. Giants. If you, for a split. if you scared, get a dog. We ain't scared of neither one of them. Bring them down. Bring them down to the Petco Park. All right? We'll walk them. We'll leash them up and walk them around. Y'all sound crazy. Let it be whatever it's going to be. We ain't scared of neither one of them. It wasn't about being scared. It was about trying to maintain first place. Alex, we don't yeah, maintain first said, place, period. I think you said it best, Alex. I think uh, you said it best when you said we should be rooting for them to split. <laughs> root for a split. Root for extra innings. Root for double headers root for anything that throws them off i root for a brawl i root for that well dave roberts did say that's that's a real rivalry i don't know if you guys saw that last time they were playing did you see that we never talked about it no he did he said that about the giants you know it's yeah. fun to be playing in a the real Padre fans got their panties in a bunch because they were just like oh you just live what about the padres rival who cares if it's a rivalry just go beat them <laughs> who cares what the manager thinks just go beat them win the division yeah. All right, let me do this. Let me transition into the highlight of the day, man. It is being presented by Tori Holistics, and here's Grande. What does he have for us today? It's time for the highlight of the day, man. Do you want to get high, man? I'm just really high. Tori Holistics is the sponsor of Highlight of the Day. Go to kaplanandcrew.com. You click that big old Tori Holistics banner, and you get 20% off your next purchase. Did he fart? Yes. I didn't. Who did? Yes. Someone did Someone fart. farted. Nice try. Know. Yeah. It wasn't uh, me. Uh-huh. And Someone It came farted. from you. That's why you didn't hear it. No, it didn't. wasn't me. I didn't hear it. Uh-huh. Someone wasn't farted. Wow. I'm denying. Wow, I'm denying. Dude. Listen, wow. if you're watching this show, play that part back. You will clearly yeah, hear, hear a fart. That was a fart. I didn't hear, I didn't hear it. That was a fart. Okay. And wasn't none of us were on camera. What man? I, I, there, are times, there are times when I will fart. And I will hit the mute button because I don't want it to be loud. Um, and then there are other times where I actually fart and I don't hit it and nobody has anything to say about it because I don't think anybody heard it. So my I can just say right here. now, that wasn't me. You farted, dog. My dog no, is in no, here. Dog. Anyways, hey, you on a Memorial, diet, bro. It ain't coming out right. Memorial Day weekend is this weekend at Tory Holistics and they got so many deals starting tomorrow. Here's what it is. Brands participating. Chill. Starting tomorrow until the 31st. You get 25% off. Um, 
Lowell, 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 <laughs> Lowell, Lowell, Lowell. Buy a Lowell Origins Collection 8, get Lowell pre roll for a penny. Dr. Raw, 25% off this weekend. Can, 25% off this weekend. All happening at Tory Holistics. Guess what I got? Yeah, for highlight of the day. You guys want to guess? Yeah, I'm guessing. Do we get options? No. Just get to guess what it is. Um, I uh, I got nothing. I'm gonna go with Otani, like a Otani, Otani, Otani. No, I'm I'm going with more fight videos. Highlight of the day is a fight between oh. the Cubs lower A affiliate and the Padres lower A affiliate. Tin caps. Y'all see this scrap happen two days ago? This is a real on the field fight. Now, Scott, are you gonna blame? The rage of being locked up here, or are you gonna what, what are we blaming for this big old baseball? So this is a proper baseball fight between the tin caps and the cubs, whoever, oh, whatever they're oh, these are pathetic punches. Oh, but just wait, it's coming, fight. it's coming because they get to it, they get on it, they get together, it starts like a rub beast from it. Then somebody throws a baseball, and now here comes the haymakers. And here, look at it, poor number nine over here got tossed around like a little girl. This is a I great was looking at number, three. I was looking at number, number three. three, number three, yeah, sorry, yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Wow. This is a real base brawl. Wow. This is real. Uh, this is a baseball melee, dude. Dude, I've never thrown a punch with a mask on. That guy did. Wow. <laughs> that was a good fight. Wow. These are all like probably 19 year old kids, too. You know, these are guys yeah. like kind of out of high school and maybe a little out of college. The guy wow. who was the guy in the red who threw the first couple of punches, brother, you got to learn how to fight. Oh, he's oh a baseball player. Man. Oh, my goodness. Y'all ever see how, like, athletes that play one sport and then you make them do a different sport and how terrible, terrible. they look? Like, awful. Like, you ever seen a soccer player throw a baseball? It is not a good look. Or even shoot right. a basketball. Or the opposite yeah. way around. You see LeBron shoot, kick a soccer ball? It's awful. <laughs> it's awful. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times you see, like, uh, guys who they may play basketball, but they didn't really grow up playing baseball or football. So instead of throwing like an athlete, like you might expect them to, you're like, Ooh, this guy doesn't really, really know how to throw a ball, but he's a pro athlete. Yeah. But he plays basketball. He doesn't know how to throw a baseball. He didn't grow up throwing a baseball, grow up playing basketball. You know? Yeah. I've seen that before. Yeah. A lot. Bad. All right. Hold on one second. You, you, listen, something's going on. You know, I, I don't know. Something's going on here at the crib. Let me go deal. I know this. We're like right in the middle of this is what happens when you work at home. Kick them out. This is I know this is what happens when you work at home. Like uh, like like they're not really emergencies, but somebody here in this house needs debt. Hold on. You guys continue. Hold on one second. Help me. Hold did on. You, did you see your your Cubs today, JB? They're playing oh. the, the Pirates. Did you see the knucklehead play of the year? I saw Javi Baez running around all the bases. Oh, did you see how though? So it was, it was uh, Cubs top of the third, Cub runner on second, Javi Baez two outs. He hits this ball uh, straight. Like, let's just look at this because the first baseman all he has to do is tag first base, and he runs Javi Baez all the way back down to home plate, and the guy scores from second. This is the dumbest. <laughs> baseball play I've ever seen in my life and it's gone viral. This thing has been on the internet for like an hour. It's already got like 3 million views. It's the Dude, dumbest Javi, thing ever. Javi Baez is is Chicago famous for the way he runs the bases and the way he does like like legit playing hard baseball stuff. So he's always doing silly stuff like making guys chase him in a rundown. But if you're the first baseman, bro, you got to know, just touch the bag. He's the dummy. Yeah. Of the of the group, that guy's the dummy. Just touch the bag, bro. Know the rules. So dumb. Um, did you see what do you think about? <laughs> I'll ask you. What do you think about Jace Tingler pulling Ryan Weathers after four? Look, man. And then Chris Mack I, coming in and giving up two runs. When all he has to do, all he has to do is not screw up the bullpen. They don't trust him with anything else. Just that. And he can I tell you, this guy is going to cost this team games down the stretch when you really need to win them. And then what are people going to say? However, then the knives will be out for him when we could have avoided this to even get to this point. I do not like investing a first-time manager in a team like this. I think it's a recipe for disaster. 
I think that there's a bigger issue, and I've said it before. We need DH because Weathers would have still been in the game if there was DH. He took him out because he was coming up in the lineup. Nobody wants to see Ryan Weathers hit. And not only are you are you giving less offense, but then you're putting in a less of a player by bringing in Chris Matt and Weathers was doing well. He struck out five today on 78 pitches. He could have come in for easily for another for another inning after that if there was a DH. I'm sick and tired of baseball not having DH. I don't understand why they just don't do it. Why they just don't put DH in National League. What's the I understand the idea of tradition. But a lot of that stuff is really out of the window at this point because you're trying to put the best product on the field as possible. You're trying to get as many kids or as many young people or as many people with short attention spans to watch the game of baseball. No one wants to see the pitcher hit. And a pitcher really doesn't want to hit either, by the way. So if that's what we, if that's the way the game is going, we don't have a lot of Otanis that are pitching. Yeah, you may take the bat up there, but you ain't going to do no damage. You won't even bunt. Like, a lot of pitchers <laughs> can't even bunt. So. And by the way, I wouldn't recommend it because if you get your finger broken bunning, you're now an idiot. So just get rid of it. It doesn't make any sense now to have the DH in baseball. You've adjusted the playoffs. That's awesome. Fix this and let that be awesome. Yeah, because then you minimize the possibility of things like this happening, like Eric Hosmer hitting home run opposite field. So I don't know. I just kind of tired of baseball and their non-DH. But this weekend, they will have a DH because they're in Houston. American League rules. So we will see who DH is this weekend for the Padres. What do you think happened to Scott? He literally yeah. left. Like he literally left. At, at the rate he's going, I bet if somebody he said somebody got into a fender bender. It, it, he's got a lot of moving parts in his house, man. Between his son and his his two oldest daughters, they're always on the go, and somebody's always got to drive the youngest one around. So she probably punched somebody. You think his daughter punched somebody? Fist of cuffs, probably some fist of cuffs. Which one? Somebody, somebody call some hands. I would say I would give the punching probably to the youngest one because the two older ones wouldn't punch the young one, but she would punch them. Because that's how it is when you have siblings. The little one gets the punch and the older ones don't. You think they recorded it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would yeah, Scott yeah. let us play it if one of his kids got in a fight? If one of Scott's no. kids got no. in a fight. With each other? No, no, no. The two, let's say the two that are of age. Okay. If one of them got in a fight and there was video of it, would Scott let us play it? Ooh, they would have had to win the fight, yeah. If they win the fight, yes. If they lose the fight, no. Yeah, no chance. Because if it's like Justin and he's getting pounded like that dude yesterday in the Astros, in the Astros uh, stadium, like I'm not playing that video. But if Justin oh. is the Dodger fan, I'm playing that video. It's definitely getting played. Oh, if if Justin is the guy saying, come on, in a ripped up Padres jersey. Oh, yeah, that video is definitely getting played on this show. Definitely. Like, look at this guy. Dude, he... Just taking a punch. It's just eating him. His friend, by the way, terrible punches thrown. I mean, yeah, your punch finally got him off of him. Mm -hmm. And can we address another thing? Okay. Another thing. Another thing. Another one. These security people, they're useless. They're they're literally useless. And and I Gosh. get it. They're 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 trying to get paid. This woman ain't gonna jump in the middle of this fight at all. She just gotta get some people on the radio. If you're gonna hire these people to do these jobs, knowing that a lot of people are fighting, like she's probably an usher. So yeah. she probably saw some 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 uh mischief going on and took a couple steps down. But you see she got that walkie talkie out. That guy in the Korea uh, jersey did more than the security did. That's right there. Did you see that little part where the girl's is talking to her voice? Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's the one where he's just in stay trouble. down. Just he's in just trouble. Just stay down. Is that grounds for a breakup? Yes. If you yes. get a, if you get in a fight in general at a stadium, B, if you get beat up in front of your girl, is that grounds for a breakup? I'm breaking up with her before she can break up with me because the girl hit me, okay, or she hit the friend and you didn't do anything. You can't date a woman. That if you're gonna go somewhere and things go south, she ain't gonna chip in. Now she ain't gotta take no punch, but she gotta throw one, like the Dodgers, uh, like the Dodgers girl did. Right? If she's throwing punches, she's trying to support her man. What you doing? You just watching your man get hit by some woman? That's what you here for. You gotta step in. Uh, earlier, I asked who is the worst person. We had the Dodger fan beating up the Astros fan next to his little baby daughter. We had the guy who spit on Trey Young 
at the Hawks Knicks game yesterday in Madison Square Garden, and the guy who threw popcorn on an injured Russell Westbrook. What's your vote, Browner? The spitter. The spitter without question. The spitter without – you don't spit on people. So man. far early on, 87% of people agree with me. It's the Dodger fan. Nobody's blaming the popcorn guy as the worst guy. And 12% say the guy who spit on Trey Young. People fight – listen, man. People fight in front of their kids in their own house. So it's Yeah, not, but it's different, though. Like it's, but you know what? You know what the craziest part, though, is that kid didn't look scared at all. It looks like she's seen that before. That's not the first time she saw daddy punch somebody. Yeah. Or mama punch or somebody. Or mama punch somebody. Thanks. Right. She from a fighting household. Yeah. So she, that, that, ain't, that ain't nothing new to her. I, listen, I've seen a lot of interactions where kill, children just start crying just because of raised voices. Right. And right. this kid just, just sat there like still watching the game. <laughs> like, yo, guys, did you see what happened on the field? Punch, punch, punch. Okay, baby, we got to go now. Daddy fought. So I, I yeah. did. No, man, no. That That is so small and so not even on the radar to a guy who spit on someone. And not spit on the person directly. Spit over a person, a woman of all things, to spit on somebody else who wasn't even looking. Dude, like, what a coward. And that guy, it, it was already it was already the fourth quarter when that happened, I believe. The spitting. Mm -hmm. So he knew he was sitting behind 50 Cent, and he still did it. That's some balls still. on that guy. Still, because so ain't no way. Uh, hey, first of all, there's no way I'm spitting on anybody. Secondly, there's no way I'm spitting on someone when 50 Cent sitting in front of me. Listen, I told y'all, man, 50 Cent looking a little puffy, dog. He ain't on that Kwame Brown beef no more. He looking a little puffy. Got his girl with him. She got the arms out. She done got spit on, and he just uh, what happened? Nothing. Nothing. I told y'all he ain't tough. He ain't tough no more. He he producing movies now. He ain't in the street. <laughs> Okay, he ain't making that G U Ned. What G -G we in here? G -G what he don't make that no more. I love. It. Okay, he making twenty one questions now. I love G U. Well, twenty one questions is a great song. It is a great song, but ain't no punches being thrown in that song. G Unit, that album that they released was fantastic. It was good, man. So it's, good. It's too bad. It's too bad. Tony Yayo -Yo started smoking actual Yayo. -Yo. Who is it? It was Fifty Cent, Tony Yayo, -Yo, Tony Yayo, -Yo, Lloyd Banks, Lloyd and, uh, Banks. No. Lloyd, Lloyd Banks is nice. You don't get a lot no, of credit. No, it was the other nice. guy. Lloyd Banks released an album. It was okay, but another guy, um, Young Buck. Tony, yeah, yeah. Young Buck. Oh, Young. Oh, uh, Young Buck was on cocaine so, but, all day long. But Young Buck released a solo album that was freaking fire, fire. I used to blast that I, in my in my Honda Civic back in high school. <laughs> She's a big Young Buck fan. I was back then. What? I think it was straight out of Cashville, wasn't it? Straight out of cash. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's the title of the album. Yeah. Oh, in the game, he was part of G Unit. Yeah. That's how G Unit broke up, dude. Because Game right was mad at Fifty Cent because Fifty Cent was like, "I wrote all those songs," and Game didn't get any money off the documentary. How much you want to bet if I go to Spotify right now and I search Young Buck that he's released a ton of oh, albums, countless albums, like you just missing out. Tons. Of, I gotta go back and listen to Young Buck because he had some straight fire, dude. I would say Young Buck's probably had three albums since since that. Straight out of Cashville. Young Buck. Here we go. Let's see how many of them. <laughs> Get out of here. Really? That many? How many? Hold on. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. Can't be that I got to put this on screen, dude. This. <laughs> dude. These are all albums albums? Can't be. Okay. Here it is. If you're watching. <laughs> I don't know why we're talking about this, but Young Buck, straight out of Cashville, 2004. Look at how much I have to scroll. No, those can't many. be albums. No, those got to be like features. Dude, look at what? Dude, that's the best of, though. No, look, look at oh, God. 10 pints. Back, he released an album called Vaccine this year. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Dude. No, bro. Look at all no. this. No. Look at all this. And they're only getting like 10,000 views. Listens. Wow. Young Buck. You got a lot of listening to do this weekend, bro. I'm going to go back and listen. What are his top they, his top songs have to still be all from straight out of Cashville. You better listen, you're going to have to go to the best of Young Buck and kind of melt it all together. Oh my god. Dude, but Young Buck, Shorty Wanna Ride, 24 million listens. That, great song. It's great, great song. song. Great song. Uh, I didn't get to this fight. We got three minutes left here before we wrap up. I have no idea where Scott went. I legitimately have to. I, I swear to you guys, I have no idea where Scott went. 
Like he just left. Mm, mm, mm. Anyways, did you see this fight last night? Dodgers, Dodger fan, Dodger on Dodger fan violence. Did you see no, this I did one? Not. At a bar in Houston after oh, the game, God. Just Dodger fans just going at it. They're come on, guys, you're on the same team, bro. Just because we came in the same car, don't mean we leaving in it. That's brutal. That's look at them cameras getting out too. That's brutal. Anyways, mm -mm -mm. anyways, uh, with the last two minutes. What do you think tonight, JB? NBA. I, th I think we're gonna get a. I think we're gonna get a really good game from the Lakers. Uh, I think the Bucks are gonna beat the Heat again because I think they've got their number now. Uh, and the, the, who's the night game is Portland and Denver. And I think I think Denver is gonna win in Portland tonight too because I think Aaron Gordon's been great and they really don't have an answer for Jokic. So I, I think we're looking at a, a Nuggets win on the road. I think the Lakers are gonna destroy the Suns tonight regardless of whether Chris Paul plays or not uh and and I think the Bucks are gonna really put it to Miami tonight because th they figured out Jimmy Butler what like, happened I've, to Miami? I've been telling people how'd they get to the finals last year it was the bubble the bubble got them to the finals they're not good they've got two guys this is what the, and this is what when Harrison was on earlier talking about the draft picks right Miami would not trade Tyler Hero in a deal to get James Harden. Literally, that's that's the only reason why James Harden doesn't play for the Heat right now, because they didn't want to trade Tyler Hero. How's that looking right now? I don't know. How is Tyler Hero doing? Not very well. Not very well. And even if he wasn't, by the way, the guys were never going to be... Tyler Hero was never going to be an all-star. Never, ever, ever. Tyler Hero is Kyle Korver. Like, he's a shooter who can't guard anybody. Yeah. He can't dribble. So you wouldn't trade that guy for James Harden. I really sometimes you can love your own pieces. And I think that's what I've always admired about the Lakers. They liked Brandon Ingram. They liked Lonzo Ball. They liked Josh Hart. Bye. They really loved Anthony Davis. Y'all got y'all ain't gotta go home, but y'all gotta get By out way, of here. All those guys, Tyler, uh Julius Randle, most improved player. Jordan Clark Clark Clarkson, sixth man of the year. Brandon Ingram, most improved player last year. Bye. Got a ring. Bye. Got a ring. Bye. And it was worth it. Yep. You got a ring, so you, it was worth it. I, I don't see Miami getting a ring out of Tyler Hero. Like, you got to sell those guys high. You get a collection of those guys to get a guy like James Harden. All right. Well, that's it for today. I have no idea where Scott went. He will be back tomorrow. I think Beer Friday with Ho Dads. Didn't even know they had their own brewery, but they do have their own brewery. They're coming on tomorrow. Until then, KaplanandCrew.com, at Kaplan and Crew, Instagram, Spotify, everywhere on Earth. Go check us out. Browner? Earth. Manana. See ya. Earth. <laughs>